ayuda a nuestra fe. Y así lo agarra él. Él va precisamente con la palabra de Dios, con la palabra de Jesús. Entonces, por Dios que llega a nosotros, ya no solo por la santidad, arrastrando por el mar, que se va a encontrar con el mar, y, y no llega a nosotros con la bolera América del Norte, most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. <laughs> Hello everyone, <clears throat> and peace of Christ to all of you, please invite your friends, and let us have some good time together and share education as usual. Now, as you know, we, uh, we supposed to uh, discuss having a debate with the sheikhs from London, but we are not sure yet if they are joining us or not. I see uh, Yaqub is online, I will call him, and I hope his sheikhs or his teams are ready. We put the ring down so it doesn't bother you until he answer. And let us hope that's... Uh... Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum How are you doing, Yaqub? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Did you get your shakes ready, my friend? Okay. So, I I thought it was 4.30, but uh, anyways, I've spoken to him yesterday. Yeah. Um, long story uh, short, he's unwilling to debate, uh, uh, which is very unfortunate. Do you remember what I told you? Uh, uh, yes, that they are not going to be willing to debate. Yeah, they they knew who I am, right? This is why they refused, right? Uh, no, I didn't mention who you were. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, really. Well, what I did was I I asked them the questions I asked you yesterday. Yeah. And I said to them that I spoke to a Christian and he told me this. And I said to them that, you know, he wants to have a conversation with you tomorrow at 4.30. Um, they said, um, no, they're not willing to do this. They said they would ask around. Um, I, I'm not too sure if that's the case, to be honest. All right. Well, we, what we can do, I mean, we cannot force people to come and debate us, but we would like to have somebody have knowledge, maybe... Because you know what, what uh, usually Muslims they do say that uh, I debate people who do not know, and when we challenge the sheikhs, they don't show up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so what what I what I've gone to do is actually um, so that there's two things I've done in the meantime. Um, I've re I've looked at um, one of the books of Ibn Kathir um, Al Sir Al Nabawi. Mm -hmm. If you know this book, mm -hmm. um, to uh, check if the uh, mention of Khadija's wedding mm -hmm. is there. And I'm not sure if you read the book, but it is mentioned there, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, so... You well, know. No, I mean, do you think really that I am going to send you a link, Musnad Ahmad, even the Muslims, they have audio for it. And, I mean, you can type in two minutes in Google, Prophet Google, peace be upon him. And he will get you the answer. So, I mean, it's going to be embarrassing. And it's going to be, first, first, I'm a Christian, you know, and I'm forbidden to lie. Secondly, you know, lies are very short. The rope of a lie is very short. It doesn't matter how you try to extend it. People will find out, right? So there's no point of making a, saying a lie to you. And then you will find that this is not a true. And then what? Then I will lose, I will lose your respect. 
and I will lose uh, the argument and uh, what I accomplish nothing, right? There's no yep. point. <laughs> so, so we will not mention anything unless we are sure. So, uh, so what do you think, Yaqub? You can get us anyone else replacing those people who can somebody have knowledge, or everybody retreat. Uh well, I'm I'm going to ask around to to be honest. Um, th this is what I'm going to do. All right. Um, I think that's correct. But at the same time, have you uh, heard of a channel called Islam Kiwe before? I don't care really for names, but what I know that Muslims, all Muslim channels are the same. They are copy paste of each other, and nobody knows what he's talking about. No, what I mean is that it's a Islamic uh, channel um, where you can call in as well. Yeah, well, give uh, me their Skype. I will call them right now. No problem. Um, no, they they come in at tw they they're on TV. Uh, I will send you the information that they come in at twelve o'clock. You see, I called I called the Dean Show before, you know, and the Dean Show. yeah, they did not let me go. Actually, I have it recorded. I posted on YouTube. You know, they mm -hmm. the, they you know they lie. <laughs> they have a preset people to call and preset questions. You know, so like it's not like now. I do not know who's going to call me. They have a, they have a, uh, they have a questions already is made. They made someone of them calling the, what it's called TV, and supposedly they are going to answer the one who's caller. And the D show actually go farther with their lies. They don't even receive calls, you know, because when I call, they did not let me go through. And the guy you said state, you know, he he have a cell phone. Have you ever heard of a TV have a cell phone? You're answering by cell phone. And nobody hear what he is saying, and nobody hear, I mean, who is calling, and nobody hear the voice of a caller. And Yusuf said, he said, uh-huh, yes, brother, uh-huh, okay, okay, we will answer you. But what is the question? Who was talking there? Nobody knows. And I tried to call them, they did not let me go. They, right away, they figure out my voice. So anyway, Okay, well, what I will do is this. I will do one thing then. I will call tomorrow at 12 o'clock, and I will ask them um, the three questions, and I will also ask them to... Uh, give us a good reason why that they're refusing to speak to you. Yeah, uh, and you can we'll tell them all oh, what you need to do. If you don't want to call, like maybe they feel like they are higher higher than us, we are lower than them, no problem, we are humble people. You just give me your Skype, I will call you. I will call you myself, you know, no problem. I, yeah, all what I want, okay. I want just people willing, they will not feel like we are harassing them, you know what I mean? I mean, there's no harassment here, right? We're talking no, I about know, but I mean, it's a, if, a, if somebody have a private Skype and yeah. somebody give it to me, maybe the guy is sitting with his wife, right? You know what I mean? Uh, maybe he's with his kids now. Maybe he's, you know? So we want people who knew that we are going to debate them and they knew what the topic, you know, it's about Islam and they are willing to do it. Then I will call him. Otherwise, I don't want to, like, if I know now a Sheikh num phone number, I'm not going to call him, you know? I will not, yeah. because this is not this is not right. I mean, people they have their private life, and you don't jump, you know, and call people on their phone. This is harassment, you know. Uh, Unless it is like okay, uh, now we have a program. Whoever wanna call us, call us, etc. And this is a different story. But my experience with Muslim programs, they don't really take calls. They have a preset questions like Zakir Naik. Zakir Naik, he's standing the stage. The sister there is asking question. Sister, I'm going to answer you. You know, and uh, you know, and the drama start, and the question, and the answer is very funny and very. Uh, the question is silly, and the answer is is more silly. You know, uh, like uh, do you know, I don't know if you remember once uh, Zakir Naik they asked him, uh, they so supposed to be a woman. She asked, "How come Muslim women she will not g get uh, virgins?" You know, like the Muslim man. Yeah. So Zakir Naik he said to her, and you can go find the video. He said, "Brother Sita, that you ask question. How come a Muslim woman she will get virgin?" First of all, the word hur is a plural word. It is a female and male. So sister, it's a Allah, you will get hur. Like, what the heck? Hur, <laughs> hur suddenly is, is, is male too? <laughs> I mean, the Quran says, There's nobody from a human or a genie made them intercourse and have made them bleed, right? Yeah, no, hur are, are, are females for Female, sure. Females, uh, go watch the video. And he says to her, hur is not a male, it's not a female, it's for both. So inshallah, you will get hur. And all the Muslim will, wow, look at the answer. Allahu Akbar, you know? I mean, what, an, what a nation of ignorance. So what I can say, I mean, my friend, if, if those are their scholars, and this is their top scholars in TV show, you know? I mean, what about the ignorant? If this is the, if this is the knowledgeable one? 
you know? Yeah. And I imagine, mean, no, no. imagine even how faithy the promise is, the promise in the women, and he is in the stage, that you will have, excuse my language, you will have a lot of men to if you. This is exactly what he's saying. I mean, there's no shame. He told her, so inshallah. Say that, say that again? So say that again? He said to her, when he promised her a lot of whore, male, you right? Yeah. He is saying to her, a lot of men will if you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is exactly what the promise is. Inshallah, sister, you will get a lot of men. <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, this is disgusting. This is filthy. Uh -huh. You know? So, so let me ask you this. Um, you know, in, in Islam, the prophet is the best of example, right? This is what we're told. Mm -hmm. um, I want to understand from your perspective. Um, what is the reason why you're not a Muslim? Because you're obviously well-read um, in Islam. You, you, you clearly are educated. So I want to know first why you're Muslim. First of all, Yaqub, Yaqub, what does the word Muslim mean? Mm, someone who submits. That's not true. The word Muslim means someone he surrender. And surrender is an act of cowardice. So a man, he come to us with his army, and he says, surrender or die you know surrender mm -hmm. or die if you go to the quran just to prove my point to you now we know that muhammad he he you know he ordered the muslims you know to fight the christian the jews the the, the arab etc and he said to them if they surrender which means they become muslims don't kill them if they the christian in the case of the christian and the jews because he want money and income he says if they pay jizya don't kill them you know just yeah, pay money, you can worship any god you want because he's a hypocrite. But if you go in the Quran as an example, uh, uh, the, 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 the Arab they said, uh, We believe, you know, we believe. Muhammad he said to them in chapter 49, verse number 14, Don't say we believe, say we surrender. The translation they use the word submit, like in Yusuf Ali, but the truth is. It says, we surrender. And here Muhammad is saying that you, uh, Arab, you say, we, we believe. Say, say, don't say we believe. Say, we become Muslims. Now you tell me, Yaqub, how somebody, you are telling him you can say you are a Muslim, but he don't believe. Islam requires full compliance, right? Um, which is requires more than just action itself. No. Uh, sorry, more than just belief itself. Yes. No. So prayer. The, the verse in front of you. Here we go. Chapter forty-nine, verse number fourteen. Read it. All mm -hmm. what you need to do, you don't have to believe at all. Believe no, never. So it says, no, no, sorry. It says here the Bedouins say, uh, yeah. "We believe." Say you believe not. You only say, "We mm -hmm. have surrendered in Islam for faith mm -hmm. has not yet entered our hearts." Mm -hmm. But if you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not decrease anything in reward for your deeds. Verily, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Exactly. The translation here right. is, not, is not correct, but let me, let, me, let me fix it. The Bedouin, the Arab, the Arab, you know, and all yep. Arab are Bedouin anyway. We believe, yep. we believe. They say, what they say? We say we believe. Okay? Yep. Okay. He said to them, don't say we believe, but you say we are Muslims. The surrender here is translation for the word Aslamna. I know you do not know much Arabic, but I think you can read it, right? Yeah, but sir, 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 just give me one sec. Let me just reread it one more time. Hmm. Say, we believe not only say, we have surrendered. Hmm. Okay. For faith has not yet entered your heart. Hmm. Okay, so is, is he saying here, is, is it saying here that the prophet is supposed to say to them, uh, don't say you believe? Because you haven't fully surrendered. No, you sh he should say, don't say we are Muslims. He said to them, you are not a believer, but you are a Muslim. <laughs> he says, okay. read carefully, my friend. The Arabic is so clear. You know, the, Ar the Arab, they said, Amen, we believe. Say to them, Lam tu'minu, you did not believe. Walakin qulu aslamna. But you should say, mm. but you should say, we become Muslims. Yeah, okay, I see okay. what you're saying. So look what happened now. Do I need to be a believer to follow the God of Islam? No. Muhammad obviously is a gang man. All what he needs, you know, people, they surrender to him and his gang grow. 
you know you don't care if you believe or not just obey me if you obey me the verse saying clearly if you obey Allah and his messenger you are fine believe or don't believe who care <laughs> the, the biggest is scam in the earth you know so and this is how Islam will grow who care if they believe or not conquer the city everybody die or live what do you want say we are surrendering you know this is why the Quran says uh, the, the chapter of Al Fatah, you know, when the when the victory came, the people they enter into Islam by waves, correct? But, yes, correct. Okay. So why did it not enter into uh, the religion before the the victory, before the war? It's a war, you know. So when the war when, when Muhammad was victorious by war, then people they enter into religion by waves, by tens of thousands. They, there's no believers. Nobody is a believer. No, 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 no. But sorry, sorry. That's not really fair thing to say. Here we go. Uh, the, the chapter of victory, Al, Al Nasr. You know. No, 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 no. I, I don't dispute that. You're right. Uh, people did become Muslims in waves after Islam became victorious militarily. This mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have to remember that uh, back in those days, um, even with uh, Christianity as well, when the, for example, the Roman Emperor when he became Christian, mm -hmm. the, everyone else became Christian. Um, pretty much um, when the Ethiopian no, my friend, let, let me let me let me help you and then and, and that was normal. no that's not, mean, that's not true that's not true it's not true you see Christianity was spreading so fast inside the Roman Empire even though the Roman they were killing Christians as, as killing cats and dogs and you know that correct yeah that's okay true. and now because of Christianity is spreading Christianity was able to arrive to the royal family it's not because of Christianity was not there, and then suddenly the one king he become a he become a Christian, and then everybody become a Christian. Already Christianity is all over the place. No, so, no, no. But what I'm what I'm saying is that um, back in those days, uh, and this is my, my friend. Back. I understand. I understand. The king he, he you know, and place. this will have a huge influence, and this is happening right now. You know, you yeah. see somebody he worship an actor, and the actor become a Muslim. He say, okay, I'm going to be a become Muslim, or he want to be a Christian. So people who love this actor, they say, oh, Christianity must be good because people are dummy. But this is not what happened with Christianity. Christianity spread all over, not by sword. And even the Constantine, the king, who become, become a Christian, he did not carry a sword. He says, if you don't believe in me, I'm going to kill you all. He became a, he became a Christian. That's it. You know? But this is, it was already Christianity all over the place. Christians, they have sorry, established sorry, churches. But that's not true. The Christians did destroy uh, the temples, they start to abuse the, the pagans. This is well documented. Well, this is uh, well documented by who? By historians. Okay, where, where, where did they start discriminating? Can you show me? Where, okay. where exactly, uh, where exactly uh, that happened? Let me pull up the sources. Bear with me a second. Hmm. Which country, which cities, which... Uh... Uh, predominantly Egypt and Greece. Hmm. Well, uh, you know, I cannot, uh, I cannot confirm or deny because I have no idea about it. However, this is not Christianity teaching anyway. You know, this is not Jesus, and this is not the disciple. Everybody knows that Christianity. Jesus, he says, if people refuse you, you know, clean the dust from your sandals and leave them. You know, so if uh, Christians they do such a thing, this is not really Christianity. People might do bad stuff. Christians they kill each other too, right? No, no, I, I'm not saying that, you know, Christians are, are doing this, but what I'm trying to say is that, um, you know, I, I hear you often say that Muslims are, are are violent, blah, blah. You see, when I talk about Muslims, I'm talking about oh. the teaching of Muhammad. When, when somebody <laughs> says to me, ISIS is not Islam, this is, a, this is a lie. But if I say, let us say now, let us say for sake of argument, we have a Christian ISIS. But this is yep. for, for sure is not Christianity, correct? Because Why? Because... Because the Christianity is what Jesus taught. So when people were going out and, um, you know, uh, colonial period and, you know, killing thousands of people. My friend, the colonial period, they, nobody is not about, they, they were using it's not about Christianity, you know. The kings are searching for gold and silver, etc. And then missionaries go with them. That's all. It's not, the purpose is not really Christianity. Those, uh, all those kings, they were corrupt. All of them, they are fornicators. All of them, they kill even each other. They kill Christians. So how in the world they are going to spread Christianity? They are looking for a new land to suck the blood of those people there. That's all. But then the missionaries, they come with them. 
and they spread the Christianity. They, they, they take it as an advantage. Like, like now, you know, uh, the American, they went to Afghanistan. American, they found opportunity. But the American army is not a Christian missionary army, you know. But, but uh, uh, the missionaries, because now it's secure for them to go and open churches, and tens of thousands of Afghani, they become Christians. So, but this is not the army doing that work. This is missionary. People who have no arms, no weapon. You know, me and me and you go to the country because now we can go. So yes, but 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 uh, be, before we go back to Islam, because I think we should focus on Muhammad and Islam. Hmm. But but before we go back to this, uh, you do know the history of Christian missionaries in Africa, especially, right? It's very horrific. Well, this uh, is. Uh, 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 people they make horrific things, but this is not a Christian missionary uh, history. This is not true because a Christian missionary is a is a person who follow Christ and he follow the Bible. So when you say in Africa, uh, the Christian they went to Africa and they start killing people who don't believe in Christianity. Sorry, say that again. The, the Christian missionary they went to Africa and they start killing the one who don't believe in Jesus. They they did a lot of stuff like this. Yes. No, that's false, my friend. That's absolutely false. The first, well, well, the first the missionary, the first missionaries is the one who went to Ethiopia and Egypt, and it was one person, just one person. I'm not talking about the the, the beginning. I'm hey, talking my friend, about so that. this is a Christianity. Anything else is not Christianity. You know, uh, if if a person is a filthy, he is filthy. I can claim to be a bishop, but I am a child molester like Muhammad. What does this have to do with Jesus? Christianity is people following Jesus. Anything else is not. So, Christianity is. A faith is spread around the world before any can convert by individuals, not by army. The disciple of Jesus, they were individual. Jesus never had an army. Every individual went to a place, and then that place accepted the Christianity. But claiming that uh, there's an army went to that place, well, all those armies, they are going there for a purpose, and the purpose usually is money, is business. Is a is a glory of a king is not a glory of God. None of them care really for God, and the proof, you know, wherever they go, they take whatever is there. You know, they go to, uh, uh, you know, like now even even when when uh, empire like America, uh, or China or the Russian, they are trying to explore the space. Is that the purpose? Is it is it really science? No, the purpose is who can reach first. To something valuable, discover it and take it. You know, yeah. The appearance is science, but the reality is, it's a big investment. It's very costly project, but hoping that we will be the first one to take. So if we find an Earth in different space, you know, if the American find the Earth, they will claim it for themselves, and that will be the new America. The same as the kings of Spain and the king. But you notice here that your prophet was supposedly sent by God. And your prophet is the one who told his followers, you are the best man uh, sent, the best people ever sent to mankind, right? Yes. In chapter 3, verse 110. But what was the purpose? The purpose is to enslave everybody and bring them with the chains. Is that correct? To, to enslave people? Yeah. And bring them to the, the chains? Excuse is, the excuse is, we want to save them from hellfire. You know, this is the this is the excuse of Muhammad. Why he want to enslave everybody? Why he want to kill everybody? Well, we want to save you from hell, like like Putin now attacking the Ukrainian poor people. You know, because we want to liberate you, and you know, liberate you by stealing their land and taking their uh, their, their cities and destroy them and kill them and raping their women. But the the the, the flag is saying we want to uh, you know liberate you. This is the hadith. This is this is from Sahih al Bukhari. You mm -hmm. are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit and between two brackets for the benefit. Look at the benefit of mankind. Chapter three, one ten. Here, explanation by your prophet saying, the best for mankind are those who bring them with chains round their necks till they embrace Islam. Is that what Jesus said to the Christian missionaries? Go and bring people to accept me by putting chain round their necks. Is that what he said to uh, Peter and to Paul and to John? Is that the order of Jesus? I, I don't know if he said that, but he for sure did not uh, forbid slavery. I can tell you that. My friend, you are mixing things up. First of all, no, Jesus, he forbid slavery. How he forbid slavery? 
he never owned a slave. And if Jesus is the one we follow, and Peter never owned a slave. Can I, can I ask you to... My friend, to all the disciples of Jesus, all the disciples of Jesus, my friend, hold on. All the okay. disciples of Jesus, they never owned slaves. And they yeah. are our best examples. And then you need to ask yourself, why in the time of the slavery, they don't have slaves? Everybody owned slaves. Jesus, he raised people but, from death. But was he not, but was he not from, uh, was he and his disciples not poor? Is we, we all know that well, Jesus is people. the last one can be poor, and I will tell you why. I am the person who raised people from death, how I can be poor. So he is poor because he doesn't accept money, but he can accept money. Imagine you are raising people from death. You are making the, the, the blind see. You know, I mean, how many people now, if imagine you have a clinic, no one entered the clinic, he don't get out perfectly healthy. How much money you will make? No, no, you make a lot of money, but you said that the Bible. Okay, can I ask you to open up first Peter hmm. two eighteen, okay. and share that on the screen, please. You tell me what about it. Um, it says, "Slaves, be subject to your masters with reverence." So, not only in those uh, who are good and equitable, but also those who are preserved. Mm, and... So it's it's there. It's not condemning. But he is talking. Okay, you, you just noticed that he is talking to Christians. So those are Christians enslaved, and they did not choose to be slaves, and he don't want them to use violence to free themselves, be obedient. So you are mis misunderstanding the difference between uh, we are promoting slavery, and we are asking the Christian not to shed blood and kill to get their freedom. Christianity, everybody knows, teach peace and teach love. So be obedient, and those are the one he's talking to are not, <laughs> Muslims, those are Christians, because who is going to read this and listen to this and obey this? The Christians, correct? Yeah. Okay. So he is not uh, and not siding with the master against them. He is telling them that Christianity, we as a Christians, we are against violence. You know, that's all. He is not approving slavery. They are already slaves. Don't kill. And don't make uh, 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 like uh, chaos and shed blood. And uh, usually at the end, the slaves is the losers. They will be killed. As an example, okay. as an example, you know what happened to Sawrat uh, al, al Zinj in, in Basra, in Iraq? No, what happened? You can search it right now. Hundreds of thousands of black people, not 10, 20. I mean, the whole area, there's no, there's no white people live there, only black African slaves. So the mm -hmm. Muslims, they start bringing slaves, and the whole territory of Al-Basra become a slave territory, and they, live, they, they, they have their own city. But what they do, they bring them there, they force them to do uh, like uh, irrigation work, like, you know, farming work, and the Arabs sit home, and they eat, and they sell the product, and the slave, even the one who sell, is the slave themselves. But the slaves became big in number to the point they become the whole, like, I mean, tens of uh, of kilometers, thousands of kilometers are full of slaves. So they made the revolutionary. And what happened then? All the Arab, the white ones, united the Muslims, and they killed them. Right now, there's zero black people in Iraq. You can go right now and search it in Google. It's called- No, I, I don't deny that the Muslims no, no, my it's, friend, my friend. Very, very you see, there's a huge story. difference between yeah. uh, you're a prophet, he owns slaves, do he? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. He died and he still owns slaves. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So how he can be against slavery? My, my Lord, he never owned one. He never had one. He never bought one. He never freed one. Because simply, yes, but, you don't but have he any. Never, he, never, he never condemned slavery. No, you see, in, in, in Christianity, uh, Jesus said, uh, the, what the Bible teaches us, that in Christ, there is no Greek, there is no Hebrew, there is no free, there is no slaves. All of us, we are equal. So, what you are asking for, why Jesus did not free? Well, Jesus don't have an army, and Jesus cannot free anyone. And but he one, can say it's one, wrong because already, the, already he, you know, already he gave tons of examples of uh, of respecting life. And if you respect life, you don't own somebody else. You don't. If you respect life, okay. You know. Let me let me ask you this: Exodus twenty one twenty 
It says, mm. I know this is not from Jesus, but this is the Old Testament, and you accept this, right? Right. Okay. When a man strikes his slave, male or female, with a rod, and the slave dies under his hand, he shall be avenged. But if the slave survives a day or two, he is not to be avenged, for the slave is his money. Yeah. But you know, okay, so that means what you, that's what you, but uh, first of all, that's here, fundamentally wrong. So, you, no, so no, how no, can no, you... no, no. You see, we don't compromise the same as the Muslims. We change our mind and we say, uh, oh, we are with this and we are against that. Uh, if, if you go, you, we are going thousands of years by time. In the same time, the uh, Hebrew slaves, they give themselves, they offer themselves for years as a slave, voluntarily. So, you go to a person, you say to him, I want to be your servant. Slave here is a servant. Is not, no, no, it, I'm, not, I'm not talking about Jewish slaves. I know there's a distinction between Jews owning other Jews and Jews owning non-Gentiles. Yeah. I'm talking about the non-Gentiles here. Well, those non-Gentiles usually they are coming from war. And the, because the, everybody's enslaved the Jews, so if you say to the Jews, you cannot enslave your enemies, then that will be a really horrible mistake because simply those people are seeking survival. Remember, all the Jews, they've been taken as a slave, the whole nation, twice. And they've been enslaved for mm -hmm. hundreds of years. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, the, Moses, he treat, Moses, he have the law of eye for an eye. They enslave us, we enslave them. You treat us nice, we treat you nice. You kill us, we kill you. You take our land, we will attack your land. As simple as that. So, the whole nation is under a slavery law. Everybody is a practice in slavery. And you are asking the Jews to be as if they are coming from the city of Aflaton and live between the whole nations who believe in killing and shed bloodshed and saying to them, why you are not living like angels? Well, that will erase their race and that will make them distinguish from this earth. So in order to survive in such atmosphere, there is a reason for what they practice. It was, it was a solution of existence. It was not a solution for fun. Okay, so that, that, that's fine. My, my friend, listen, listen. If, I, if, I, if, I, if, uh, if we want to compare, I mean, Islam came uh, long, 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 long after Moses, right? Uh -huh. And Muhammad, he came 600 years after Jesus, right? Yep. Okay. Jesus never owned a slave. His disciple never owned a slave. Uh -huh. And that will set an example for a Christian to, to ask themselves, well, if they don't own slaves, why we should have slaves? Obviously, he do what is right, and he don't do. If something he did not do, obviously it is wrong. If Jesus did not commit adultery, even if he never spoke against adultery, well, it is still obviously he, adultery is wrong. If Jesus never commit th uh, a theft, and but he did not commit theft, obviously theft is wrong. So it, not everything Jesus have to say in order to know it is right or wrong. There's many things Jesus did not say, but we know it's wrong. Simply, Jesus was holy, and holy is what he did. We check what he did, we find none of it is about slavery, none of it about theft, none of it about money, and Jesus is the one who taught us even not to be the same as the Muslim hypocrite. When you pray, go to the closet. I mean, what a big deal if you pray in the street or you pray, no. When you pray, go to your closet, which means a small room, close your door, and this is between you and your, and your father, the one who created you. So when we pray, even the prayer, even the prayer, if the purpose of it is to be known, it is sin. But Jesus did not say, did not, you know, he did not make a statement saying uh, praying in public is sin, you know. But he told us that there is many people do such a hypocrisy act, you know, hypocrisy. Uh -huh. So you, Jesus always, he spoke to us in parable. There's many things he said, many things he did not say, but still it is there. And the reason of that, as an example, the Jews, they come to Jesus and they say uh -huh. to him, shall we pay tax to Caesar? I mean, what does yep. have to do with Jesus? You know, pay tax to Jesus, to Caesar. But the Jews are trying to, uh, let us say, to find a reason for the, they want to get rid of this man, you know? Let us say, if he say, if he say, uh, yeah, then the people will hate him. If he say no, the Roman will arrest him. Yes. <laughs> So this is in the front of the Roman. Well, did Jesus say a pay to Caesar? You know, no. Did he say to them, obey Caesar? N not, not even once. 
What he said to them, he saw them hypocrisy. He said, show me the coin in your pocket. The coin have the image of Caesar. What Jesus said to them, will give what to Caesar to Caesar. You a bunch of, which means you are a bunch of hypocrites. You are asking me if we should pay tax to Caesar, yet you carry the money of Caesar, like the ISIS now, Al-Qaeda, their favorite money is dollar. <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, but yet the the the, the, the American are the kuffar. Well, if they are the kuffar, why you carry their money? You know, why why their money in your pocket? Why it's your favorite money in the bank? So they are hypocrite, and there is many things Jesus he was avoid actually, uh, uh, let's say saying because he knew that this community is not ready to take it. You know, Jesus is a revolution of uh, of a humanity. But he don't want to bloodshed. He don't want people to get killed because of his teaching. Yes, but but from what you're saying here, you basically make Jesus sound like a coward. To to be well, quite you, honest, you can understand it as you wish because Jesus. Uh, if you say to me now, somebody is coming to kill me, and Jesus did not defend him, you can say he's a coward. But this is not what Jesus taught. So your understanding no. can be like that. Our understanding is different because Jesus, the one who had power over death. The one who can persuade kings, you know, if I promise a king you die, I will make you alive again. This king all and his army will promise me victory forever, protect me forever, you know. So Jesus did not take advantage of who, what the power he had. So how he can be a coward? By being humble, by being uh, 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 not a person. When Peter, Peter, he took his sword and he cut the ear of the soldier and obviously he can kill him. Uh-huh. Jesus, he, he, he shouted at him, he says, what are you doing? The one who take by the sword, by the sword will be, will, 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 will be taken. So he will go, he have, he have his men, they are willing to die for him. And obviously they were able, I mean, the one who cut the ear, he would cut the neck, right? So Jesus, yeah. and Jesus, he put the ear in his place. So Jesus, if he is a coward, then he will hide behind his men and let him die, let them all die in order to save him. This is your prophet. But did they? But did they not run away? Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? This is my prophet. You're a prophet. You run away. And it, when? Okay. Isn't it you, Muslim? You claim that Muhammad he asked his cousin Ali to sleep in his bed so he can run away from Quraysh. Ah, okay. To Medina, yes. Hmm. Okay. Is, isn't it? This is an act of cowardice. Because not only this, he is risking a child. Ali at that time was, was, was a boy. He's asking a child to sleep in his bed. Those people will enter the bed and he, is, he ordered him to cover himself. Those can you just pull up the reference again? Sorry, I just want to... Uh, well, you you can search it. I mean, you are a Muslim. You don't know. I mean, you, you know the story, yeah, right? Sorry. Huh? Yeah, I know the story. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I mean, we do not need to waste time. But this is an act of cowardice because uh, uh, I am asking a child to die so I can run away, you know? Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, he knew when they are going to come to arrest him. This is what the Bible teaches, right? Even the Quran says that Jesus can tell you what you had in your houses. He can tell mm -hmm. you what you ate. So Jesus, he knew even what you in your mind. So Jesus, he knew, uh, even Jesus told them that in this moment, uh, uh, one of you will deny me. This one will deny me three times, you know? So, and this is exactly what happened. So Jesus knew exactly the time, the date, the moment, what people even will do, who will stand with him, who will not. And then uh, he did not run. If he's a coward, he will run. Imagine you're telling me that your enemy are coming to kill you now. And no, no, Jesus, okay, but how about his disciples? Did not Peter deny him three times? Yeah, but this is the weakness of a human being. But Peter himself, he stood to, de to, to defend Jesus too, you know? People, oh. people, they do sin. People, they do, they, they have fear. Uh, people, they, etc. But people, they repent too, and people, they do what they think it's right. And even when Peter he decided to defend, Jesus refused that. You know, it was not the right act from the Peter because he did not ask him to do so. So, in order to understand the Messiah, my friend, you need to understand oh. that all the message of the Messiah is, you know, to love, not to hate, to build, not to destroy, and to have peace, not to do bloodshed. So when we speak about slaves, you know, we are not against the slaves to be freed. You know, we don't own slaves, or we should not own slaves. But in the same time, if those slaves try to free themselves or disobey, what will happen to them? 
So this teaching was for their benefit, not for the benefit of the master. And how long after Christianity, after Peter, it took the slavery to be demolished? <laughs> long, long time. So imagine if you say to them at that time, uh, well, disobey your master, okay? If he know, you know, they kill them, they will be killed, all of them. So simply, it was an advice to live, not an advice to die. Okay, so which, if we which, can which go year, back to... Which year in America slavery was stopped? I mean, we are talking about now, we are not talking about <laughs> in the time of Jesus, yeah. right? So, so my friend, yeah, so, yeah, so imagine at that time you try to be free and what will happen to you? Obviously, the society is not ready and slavery uh, is very uh, popular. It's a normal thing to do. Uh, it's evil, it's ugly, it's disgusting, but they do it, you know? And uh, uh, it's, it's there exists for a thousand of years. So Christians are people who live between those people. They are not coming from the moon. Okay, but just to be clear from your perspective, mm -hmm. you believe uh, slavery is not allowed in your religion, right? I told you like in the Old Testament, it was allowed for a reason. No, but I mean now, now. No, no, it's not. Where it says, okay. where it says allowed. Can you show me? Go ahead. No, but but the better question is, where does it say you're not allowed? Because because it well, clearly says my friend, that. if we if we, if our best example is Jesus, then it's not allowed. We Christian, Jesus said, be holy like your father. Don't be greedy. Don't seek your you know your own glory. Don't all of this is is a is a person a human being is trying to abuse somebody else. How Jesus says. Love your enemy, and you are taking the life of somebody and the freedom of somebody and making him a slave. How that work? Because be I tell you why. Because Jesus did not come to change the the old book. No, you see, you know Jesus, what? he said, "I came to complete," which means it's not completed. So Jesus, when he said, as an example, Jesus, he said, "It says to you, eye for an eye," correct? Uh -huh. But I say to you. So when you say he did not want any any change. Well, obviously, I and I was exist for a reason. And now the reason Jesus here and Jesus, he make, came in here to make things perfect. So it being said to you, eye for an eye, but I say to you, and you will see what he says to you is different from eye to, to an eye, right? So love your enemy, pray for those who curse you, etc. And this is and this is a huge, a huge difference between what was and what Jesus you know, brought to us, but we understood. No, but but you see, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I, I think you're misinterpreted that because you're referring to Matthew five thirty eight, right? When he mm -hmm. says, "You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth," but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. Mm -hmm. But if you look at um, uh, Matthew five seventeen, he does say that, "Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill them." So if you read this, I mean, the law, the Old Testament does not abolish slavery. My friend, um, no, no, you see, you see, I, I don't you, are, you, are making it, you are making it very limited. We just showed uh, you an example. If Jesus, he said, it's a book, it's not a sentence. If Jesus says, it's been said to you, an eye for an eye. And the same time, Jesus says, I came not to abolish. But he just already said that I am completing the law. The law, it is a law. And I'm completing it. It was not complete. So I'm coming to you now, and I say to you, in this stage, you see, in the in the certain time, the children of Adam they marry their sisters. Is that correct? Yep. Thank okay. You. And God He approved that. Did God say it's sin? No. Okay. So why God did not say it is sin? Because I mean, this is this is what they have. I mean, there, there is no. I created one Adam, one Eve. So obviously, the children will have their sisters as wives. So the law was the law, but the law of God in the time of Adam is not the same as the law in the time of Moses, not the same as the law in the time of Jesus. So God is not a change in his law. God, the law is made for the man, not the man made for the law. As an example, the Jew has been ordered to respect the Sabbath, correct? Yeah. Okay. But obviously they have wrong understanding for the Sabbath. Jesus says to them, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. Yeah. But this is him who said to them, well, respect the Sabbath. 
But the Sabbath was made for the man. What does that mean? The Jews are greedy people. They, don't, they love money until now nothing changed. So they want to work seven days a week and they want to use their servants to work for seven. Nobody take rest, especially the servants, you know. So they're greedy. So the Sabbath was not made for God. God, he, will not, he don't care for your Sabbath. God, he do not need your Sabbath. You know, God do not need your nation too. And God, you do not need your prayer too. And God who do not need your worship. You worship him, you don't, he do not need it. It's not about God, he needed. So the Jews, they made it as, the same as the Muslims, they made that rituals or acts or uh, uh, certain uh, things to do, like prayer, they made it as, as of God, he needed. And if we don't do it, God is going to punish us. But there was, all of this was for the benefit of the people, not like if you want to go and do poo poo, you have to walk 100, etc., from the camp. What does this have to do with God? This is for the health and benefit of the, of, the, of the Jews. This is not God. Go do poo poo in your bed. So there's a law was made for people to survive. Uh -huh. and, and there is a law for people to love and to get, get high in their, in their humanity, and that is Jesus. So when Jesus came, Obviously, it's a new era for mankind. Love your enemy. There's nobody says that before. And it's a, it's a crazy to say that, actually, you know, 2,000 years ago. Love your enemy. I mean, even now, who, you know, what, what do you mean love your enemy? Let us, let us now to try to convince this filthy Putin that he should love the Ukrainian, you know? He claimed to be Christian, but he is killing them. If Putin, he tried to practice one sentence of Jesus, we have different universe. If Muslims and Christians agree to love their enemies, well, then you will not hate me, and then I will not hate you, correct? Yep. And then we will not have war. So here you see that Jesus, yes, he gave a law to the Jews before in order to survive. Like, here we go, the Amalek is attacking you, you know, the same as, you know, go and attack them. But this is what they did to you. They kill your children. They took, this is what even the Quran says in chapter 2, verse number 246. So those people, they attack. And uh, now there is a prophet, and his name is Samuel. And uh, you know, he told his people, if you go to war, you will know you will not support me, and you will not do it, etc. And then the Quran takes the story, put it in the in, in the Muhammad book, and he claimed this is from his God. God, he is condemning them for not fighting and or doing the order of Samuel. But you notice there, here, it was for the sake of surviving, not for the sake of killing. Jesus, when he come, he come in a new era where the Roman is established empire. There's a, there's a parliament. You believe it or not? The Roman, they have a parliament. They have Congress. They have uh -huh. senators. They have police. It's a very well-established state, civil state, somehow. But still, there's slavery. And, but as you see, slavery was here in USA not long time ago. Long after the Roman. So, it is time for a new step of life. Before Jesus, the Jews, they, they live by the law. By Jesus, the people live by love. So love your enemy, forgive the one, the one who hit you on your cheek, give him the other one. That is new, right? That is totally new. What do you yep. mean? You know, what do you mean? Somebody hit me, why I wanted him, you know? You know, how many, how many people they can practice this? How many people they can handle it? How many people they can say, oh, you know what? I forgive you, brother. You know, I just hit you in your face. You sent me to forgive me. Actually, if you do that, you will see that the person, he will become ashamed of his behavior. People, they can label you as a coward, but people who understand that you are Christian, they understand that this is because you are a Christian, not because you are a coward. Otherwise, everybody can kill. You know, everybody can kill. And Yeah, but, but what you're excluding here is that even in the new testament you know it, it does very clearly say you know slaves obey your earthly i'm, I'm quoting you here. see you're just uh, repeating yourself again as if i said nothing to you obey no, no, no. my friend no. obey 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 because simply if they don't obey what will happen no but but if you i i, I see what you're saying here mm. but if you the, the full verse says obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just mm. as you obey Christ. Okay, and? It, the, the, that, that's, a, you know, you guys worship Christ. 
Exactly. So what is telling slaves to go and basically worship your slave owners, correct? No, he is telling them because it's simply, you know, the uh, the slave owner in the time of the Christians, you need to read the timing too when they are talking. Mm -hmm. If this verse is written today, it's not going to be the same. They are, they gave them a verse fit for the time in their living. Obey your master because if you don't obey him, which means you obey him blindly, you don't even question their orders because if you don't, they will make you, you know, uh, ash. They can burn you, they can kill you, they can rape you, they can sell you. You have no control. So there is one of two choices either you obey them the same as you obey Christ, as you say, which means you don't question what they say, you don't question their orders, you're just obedience, and you do. You are already slave, you know, it's not a choice. And the slaves yeah. already they knew that is this this is nothing new we know that we have to do that but what the what, what the bible what the, what the disciple they are teaching them we are not here to come in to make you let us make it clear we are not here a revolutionary we are not robin hood uh -huh. we are peaceful believers so okay. the change will happen through the peaceful believer we will change the mind and the heart of your master but until that happened, you obey. If we try to force, they will kill you. They are killing us already. The one who's talking himself, he have no power over, over anything. So his words is useless. At least for the pagans. Who is the one who listen to it? It's those who believe. So if you believe in Jesus, this is what we believe. We don't want to kill the masters. We don't want to kill the king. We don't want to kill the army. We are not here coming to make the Islam is not a Christian is a Christianity, and Christianity is not Islam. Islam is uh -huh. a is a is a, 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 a is a war, is an yeah. army, is a caliphate. Christianity is poor disciples going around with their sandals. They don't have an army and never establish one, and they do not need one. So they Was change. Was it designed to have an army? Just huh? that I, I'm, I'm being on. I'm, I'm, I generally don't know. But was it supposed to be a state or not? No, the state yeah. of Jesus is not the state. Of Jesus, he says, my kingdom is not in this earth. You know, mm. my kingdom yeah. is not here. This is my, this is the, this is the world here. You see, Jesus, he said, I am from above, you are from below. And the kingdom of God, which we are promised, is not a kingdom in, uh, you know, in Hulunulu. So my kingdom is a new kingdom, is not like any. But this is not a kingdom which you will see. It's not a king and soldiers and army. The army of God is his angels. Uh -huh. And this is why okay. Jesus, when he says, he said, when he, Jesus, he come back, you see now Jesus is speaking about love, right? Yeah. But Jesus in the second coming, there's no love no more. Why? Because it's time to collect. It's time to collect. Everybody have to pay for his crimes. It's time for justice. So I let you go. I let you live. Own slaves, rape, kill. Uh, whatever you want to do, do. You want to be good, you want to be bad, it's up to you. But when Jesus come, he come with the glory of his, uh, uh, in, in, in the cloud, with the glory, uh, his glory and his angels. And then Jesus, he will say, bring them and slay them. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay. So what happened here? Are you going to say to me now, Jesus, what happened to him? Like maybe he took, he took some vitamin, he became suddenly... A warrior of war, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I see, I see your point. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So bring them and slave them. Uh, sorry, and and slay them. Uh, why? Because now it is not the same as Jesus who came to them before. This is the Lord is coming with the glory now. Before he came as a humble man, before he accept to be in the cross, before he accept to be crucified, to be humiliated, to be uh, called names. But now the story is different. Your time is up. You know, we gave you a chance. Yeah. We gave you a chance. And, you know, yeah, that's it. This is Judgment Day. So the same Jesus who said, love your enemy. Now he don't love them, those people who they are sinners. The same Jesus who loved the sinners. He said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. Right? Yep. He Jesus did gave that. an example. He says, if you have a, a hundred or a thousand sheep and one of them is lost, which one, what you do? You go after the one is lost. So Jesus is willing to leave the thousand and go after one to save. But Jesus in the second coming, 
He will not do that. It is going to be the opposite. The lost will be sent to hellfire. They will be slaughtered. They will be uh, punished. Severe punishment. And those who they were following him, those slaves who obey Jesus, those slaves who obey their masters, but the master will not go to heaven. <laughs> you see? So the kingdom of Jesus is for those, this is why Jesus said, bless those who spread peace. Yeah. Okay? So the blessing will come to you when? Is it now? No. Here we go. They slave you. You are a slave. You are, you know, Christians. How many How many Christians, the, the Muslims, they slave? How many Jews? How many, how many yeah. Christians, the Muslims, they enslave? You know, so yeah. So based on the Bible, this is why you see when the Muslims they occupy Christian countries in the Middle East, Christian they did not make revolution. Why? Because that will make bloodshed. Otherwise, everybody can kill, and they were the majority. Yeah. As an example, four thousand Muslims they went to Egypt, and yeah. and the Egypt at that time, according to history, they were four millions. Yeah. Okay. Well, the the four million Christian they can eat them alive. Right. The, the church leaders, they refuse anyone to do any revolution. And actually, if one of the Coptic people try to resist, the church go against him. This is why the Muslims were able to take over and stay. Because the Christianity, the Christians, they are always worried about disobeying God and not to be uh, true Christians. Which one is important for them? Earthly kingdom? or heavenly salvation so in order to understand christianity you have to understand yeah. what jesus did and why why the, the christians they did not you know make revolutions against muslims until now you go to any islamic countries you see christians are the only one are trusted they never betray anyone they never betray a king a muslim king they don't step you on your back the one who step in the back is Muslims. Who is the one who killed the Caliphate? Muslims. Who is the yeah. one? Who is the one who killed the grandsons of Muhammad? Muslims. Right? Yeah, this is true. At that mm -hmm. time, at that time, those uh, you know, like the grandsons of Muhammad, they don't have guards and they don't have etc. Well, a Christian who want to seek revenge, he can go and put a dagger in the in the heart of his daughter. He can. Okay. So. But they did not. Uh, I think I think your explanation makes sense uh, about the Bible. So 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 let's just focus on Islam, if, if that's okay. All right. Um, okay. So um, the Prophet and Islam. W what's your main problems? Well, uh, first of all, is is he a prophet? You just you know you you know Yaqub, I I respect you. You're a nice person, but I, <laughs> but sometimes yeah. I cannot I cannot hold myself from being rude. It's okay if I be rude with you. Do you allow me? <laughs> I, I guess Can I so. use the word stupid? You know, please, you know, let me let me use it. This is stupid because how in the world you say to me, what the problem with the prophet? Shouldn't he be a prophet first? I mean, okay. the guy, the guy, he come he to us, problem? he come to us and he said, the sun set in murky water. Here we go, he made a prophecy. How that make him a prophet? I mean, this problem with this guy, Muhammad, he cannot keep his mouth shut and the more he talk, the more he made poo-poo. And the Jews, they came to him and they asked him, tell us about Zul Qurnayn. The guy, he took the trap. And they made him believe that Zul Qurnayn is a prophet. That's why he started talking about him as if he's sent by God. But Zul Qurnayn, Alexander the Great, is a, is, a, is, a, is a bisexual. This guy is sick. He sleep with men and men sleep with him. And he sleep with women too. So how in the world this person became a prophet of Allah and he Allah, he sent him and Allah gave him victory. And then he... He keep going until he found where the sun set. Well, where the sun set, Yahoo? Can you tell me? Where the sun set? Yeah, where the sun set. Here we go. It says here, no? Hatta idha balagha maghrib al-shams. Until he arrived to the place where the, sit, the, the, the sun set. Where is that? Give me one second. Let me just look at Ibn Kathir. And... One second. Ibn Kathir, remember, Ibn Kathir came 800 years after Muhammad, and he was trying to refute the Christian. At, at that time, Ibn Kathir is like YouTube today, you know? Ibn Kathir, he, he found that the Christians in Syria are making fun of Muhammad like shish kebab. So he tried to fix it, you know? Uh -huh. 
This is not the answer. If you want to get really an answer, get an answer from uh, somebody who was uh, close to the time of Muhammad or Muhammad himself. You don't get an answer today from somebody his name is Mimi Hijab. You get an answer from somebody he is, was in the time of Muhammad. He understand, you know, uh, this is why we read what Peter say, not what a bishop say today, correct? Who care what bishop? I can, I can be a bishop. Now I can say whatever I want, but people will not listen to me. Because who is the one who more close to understand is the one who was there, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So when your prophet, he said, until he reached the sitting place of the sun, who was talking? This is Allah talking. Exactly. So Allah is supposed to, he became a news agent. And now he is going to tell us about Zul Qarnayn. This is why it says in verse number 83, and they ask you about Zul Qarnayn. Who is the one who asked him? And the Jews, as usual, they make fun of him and uh, they get him into, into a trap. Say, I shall recite to you something of his story. Okay, wonderful. Oh. Verily we established for him in earth. Suddenly Zul Qarnayn was victorious by Allah will. Why? Any Muslim can tell me why? Why Allah he established for him victory? Because he's a Muslim. <laughs> and then we gave him the means of everything. Who is the one who gave him? Allah. Who is the one who gave him the men to sleep with? Allah. Who gave him the men who sleep with him? Allah. Who gave him the soldiers? Allah. So everything is coming from Allah. And then he, that he, so he followed away. Okay. Uh -huh. Until when he reached the sitting place of the sun. Where is that? The sun sits everywhere. What do you mean until he reached the sitting place of the sun? Because simply, Muhammad the fool, there's a story written by a guy, his name is, he have your name actually, his name is Yaqub. He's from Syria. He wrote a fiction story about Zul Qurnayn. You mean, the, is it the Jewish one? No, 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 this is a Syrian, uh, this is a Syrian Christian from Syria, uh -huh. but this is a fiction story. It's like now you make a story, you put, a, you put George Bush there, you know, but the story is not real, it's a movie, you know? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So this guy, um, he wrote a story about Zul Qarnayn, and in the story, he built a dam. Muhammad, he, you know, he, in, in the moment when they asked him, they could not answer. Uh, then he asked, he found out about this story, and now he is copying that story, claiming that Allah is the one who told him. So he, uh -huh. he, he reached the sitting place of the sun. He found the sit sitting in a spring of a black, muddy water. <laughs> go, go, Yaqub. Help me. You're a prophet. You no, said no, to me no, he's no, a prophet. Right. I, I, I just had a look at um, a hadith about uh, Ibn Abbas um, asking about the same place of the sun. Hmm. Um, okay. Okay. So yeah. Are you, are so, you still so, convinced that Muhammad is a prophet? What do you say to me? Why you don't? What, what the problem with Prophet Muhammad? Shouldn't he be a prophet I, first? So, so what's your thoughts on the Quran? Do you think it's plagiarized, or what are you uh, my saying? My friend, this is this this is a very stupid book. I mean, look at this. And then he found this uh, the where the sun rise, you know. Mm. And not only that, like as an example, just to show you the stupidity. I mean, this this book is written by a very foolish, stupid man. Uh, if I say to you, uh, you know, you ask me a question. Those yeah. who slept in the cave, how many there are Christian friends? I will say to you, okay, because I don't know the answer. Some they say there are three and their dog is number four. Some they say there are five and their dog is number six. Some they uh -huh. say there are six and their dog is number seven. Some they say there are seven and their dog is number eight. Some they say they are nine and their dog is number 10. Some they come tomorrow. Some they say they are 10 and their dog is number 11. Some they say they are 11 and their dog is number 12. But shouldn't you tell us how many they are? We got it. We got it. Some they say, some they say, some they say. What do you say? The answer is Allah knows best. Like what the heck? And not only that, to make it more bigger poo, -poo he says, Few people know the answer. Look, what is the answer? Read it, chapter 18, verse number 20, 22. No, I can see that. But but you see here, the point of the message is that the number is irrelevant. 
No, um, my friend, no, the oh, question is, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you see, uh, why why the numbers is irrelevant if you are, uh, but, but then you are mentioning it. Why you are saying some, they say two or three or four and they're dogs. And second, secondly, what kind of Arabic this Arabic is? The most they say the Quran Arabic is perfect. I never heard of somebody saying they are three and their dog is the fourth. This is false. In Arabic, you don't say that even in English because dog is not a human. For the dog to be number four, he have to be the same kind of the previous three, correct? It's just like saying, for example, my family and including your dog as part of the family. No, you can see, but you don't say we are, you know, you, you don't say and uh, we are three. Uh, like let's say you and your wife and your son and the dog is number four. That's not, not this is language. This is false because the dog is not number four for he is number one between dogs. So if you are counting a human, uh -huh. you count a human. If you are counting apples, you count, uh, you don't say three apples and one cat. No, no, but but the the point is the moral of this. What the verse here is telling you very clearly is. What is the moral? Hey, tell, I'm, I'm listening. What is the moral? I, I will. I will. So it says, uh, "Your Lord knows best the numbers, none but a few. So debate not about their numbers. That's exactly what we're doing because mm. it's irrelevant, except with clear proof. Okay, mm. and consult not any of them people. First of all, where where it says debate about the debate not. Sorry. Where it says. It, it, there, so so debate huh? not about their numbers, except with clear proof. No, it doesn't say debate. It says ولا تستفتي به فيهم أمنهم أحدا, which means don't ask them. Allah knows. There's no debate. Don't ask them. لا تستفتي. Don't ask okay. them. Allah knows best. But, okay. Uh, so don't ask them. So what is the answer? Don't ask them. Ask Allah. The the, the relevance here is that uh, the the point of the story is. From my understanding, I'm not here trying to make up excuses, mm. just to be clear. Um, so, so the understanding uh, of the story is that if you trust in God and you're God, um, what's the word, God conscious, then God will provide for you. Just Our as friend, he did for if this is if this is the purpose of this story, then he should not mention the number. He should not say some, they say two, some, they say three, some, they say. He's saying there's seven. And actually, this is a story, fiction story written by Christians about a bunch of youth. They were discriminated, uh -huh. and then they went to a cave. And actually, the story is is very funny. You know, you know, in Islam, it's a, a, a dog is dirty, correct? Uh -huh. So how the dog is with them? How what kind of Muslim they are? They have a dog. Why the dog is there? Uh, but 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 do you know that in Islam we believe that certain things were halal in the past, and then God forbid them. No, um, dogs is dirty. Is dirty. It doesn't matter if you forbid them or not. Is it like the dogs at before Islam they were clean, and after Islam became dirty? No, they, they were permissible. Okay, but, uh, but listen, listen, what happened? Just you, like alcohol. Okay, well, uh, uh, it says here that according to the story here, that the dog he opened his arms. Do dogs have arms? No, they don't. Okay. So the dog, he stand in the front of the cave and he uh -huh. open his arms to do what exactly? Yeah, okay. No, I will tell you what, to, to, to guard them, correct? Uh -huh. Okay, but this is an army, I mean an army following those people and the dog will, will stop the army? No, it will alert them, huh? you know, it will alert them. But if he alert them, he will alert the army too. Yes, but it gives them opportunity to run away. They are inside the cave. They can't run away. Mm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, that makes but sense. what happened, my friend, the Arabic word is not kalbahum, is kaliahum. Kaliahum. They're a provider. This is an angel. An angel in the in the in the Aramaic story. There is an angel. He opened his arms to blockade. The cave, angel can protect them. Doesn't matter how big the army is. Do we agree? Uh -huh. Yep. So here it says Kali Ahom, not Kalbahom. Kali Ahom mean their provider, their protector, and that is an angel. The mm -hmm. one who wrote the story, obviously is written in Aramaic. He got confused. Okay. He thought that this is Kalbahom. And actually, even some Islamic interpretation, let me see if I can find some for you, mm. says this is the same. It was Kali Ahom, not Kalbahom.
Here we go. Let us see. Uh, if you go to different verse, let me show you here. You know, Muslim, by the way, they are the last one to know their books as usual, but this is nothing new. Uh, if you go to this verse, yeah, this is true. Wait, why would you say that? Because each time I speak to a Muslim, I say, never heard this before. Okay. Chapter 21, verse number 42. What is the Arabic word here? Sorry, are you sharing it on YouTube or? No, no, this is in Quran. Chapter 21, verse number 42. Do you know how sorry, to, do you know how to read it? Um, sorry, are you sharing your screen or not? Yeah, I'm I, showing I your see. screen. Yeah. Okay, I can't see it yet. Give me a second. Huh. In the meantime, I open up a Quran on my side. So I said it was twenty-one. Chapter twenty-one, verse number forty-two. And then, okay, tell them, O Muhammad, who protects you during the night or the day from the most compassionate Lord. Okay, what, yet, what is the word? Uh, what is the word protect you here? The same word we're talking about. Look at look at it. This is the Arabic word. <laughs> so the word this word became a dog. I mean, what a what a funny religion. So uh, how, how, how Muslims even they understand their book? Where do they get their reference from? Simply, the Quran is full of Aramaic words. They have no idea what they mean. And it was confusing. There is no dots. There is no tashkil. There is nothing. So, okay, you know what? This is maybe Kalbahum. But it's not Kalbahum. It's their provider, their protector. Actually, there's a there's a reading of the Quran. You know the Quran have many reading, correct? Sorry, say that again. There is many reading for the Quran, correct? Uh, yes, that's true. Okay. All right. Uh, if you go as an example, yeah, do, do sorry, tafsir, I... tafsir Ibn Hayyan or whatever Al Andalusi or Adwa Al Bayan fi Tafsir Al Quran. You know, there is many tafsir. They will tell you. That there is a reading. It's a reading. It says Wakali ahum. Let me show you. Here we go. This is Adwa ul Bayan fi Tafsir al Quran. It says here. Let us see. Uh, the page is very hard to show. Um, okay. Let us show you here. This is Tafsir Ibn Hayyan. It says, وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعِيهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ وَقِرَاءَةٌ وَكَالِئَهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعِيهِ So there is different reading for the Quran. Which one? Uh -huh. It says, كَالِئَهُمْ Not كَلْبَهُمْ There's a huge difference between the, their dog and their provider or their protector, which is the angel. So the angel, he opened his arms. That makes sense. He had opened his uh, uh, his wings to protect them. He's an angel, and he is standing firm to protect them if, in case of the army, is coming. Not a dog. The dog actually they should hide the dog because the dog will bark, and if he bark, the army will would hear. You know, they are in a cave. They can watch from the small hole of the cave. They do not need a dog to to to, to arm them. You know, to but if they have the dog barking, maybe he, maybe even he will chase the soldiers. Hey, hey, I'm here. <laughs> You know, so the dog is not useful now. But this, the, the, the truth is that this is a carry a home. And this is one of the things, too, about Muhammad. Uh, what kind of God he sent him seven reading? What do you think about this? You, you claim that your prophet is a prophet. Did Allah send Musa? You Muslim, you claim Musa is a Muslim, right? Uh -huh. Okay, did Allah send seven Torahs to Musa? No. Okay, why? Why he did not send seven Torahs to, to Musa, but he sent seven Quran to Muhammad? Yeah, this is a good question. Yeah. No, your, your, your prophet explained, he says, my people are not capable. 
Is that is that correct? No, I I know I know this reference, but I mean uh, it's a good question because that doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. That's mean you already you don't agree Muhammad is a prophet. No, no, I didn't say that. Well, you just say it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? And do you know what happened now if we believe that Muhammad he received Quran in seven seven Quran? Think with me. I'm, so sh I'm showing you the, the hadith prophet. in front of you. I'm showing you the hadith. Uh, Sorry, let me just read it. Uh, the Prophet was present at the pool of Bani Khafir. Jibreel came to him and said, Oh, sorry. Uh, you're changing it. Um, yeah, yeah, because there's many. You know, I just opened the one have more full story. Some of them, they are very short. Some of them, they give more details. Yeah, okay. Let's stick with the short one then. No problem. Yeah, go read this one. It's on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're still moving it. I think there's a delay. Yeah. <clears throat> Allah has commanded you to recite to your people the Qur'an in one dialect. Upon this he said, I ask from Allah pardon and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. He then came for a second time and said, Allah has commanded you that you should recite the Qur'an to your people in two dialects. Upon this he again said, I seek pardon and forgiveness from Allah. My people will not be able to do so. He came for the third time and said, Allah has commanded you to recite the Qur'an in three dialects. Can you scroll down a bit, sorry? Hmm. So what is the excuse? He wants more Quran? Uh, yeah, no, no. The excuse here is that uh, the people... Um, are not capable, correct? Capable. Okay. Yeah. Capable mean what? What do you think? Quran? To, to, to... Quran is a language, correct? Quran is a language. Yes. Language. Okay, it's a word. So people are not capable of what? Obviously understanding, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how the Muslim they say that the Quran is a perfectly made by Allah? And Allah is the best author. And who can make Quran like this Quran, the Quran say? And then we find that I need to write my book, rewrite my book seven times in order for Abdul to understand what I'm saying. I have many books. Imagine I need to write my book as an example, Deception of Allah. I, I wrote it first time, people don't understand. Then I wrote it second time, in different way. Still people don't understand. People say to me, Christian Prince, you, your book is really horrible, we can't understand what you're saying. So I wrote it third time, and then still they don't understand. Khabibi, Christian Prince, Khabibi, your book is, we cannot understand Khabibi. So Christian Prince, he wrote it fourth time. Is it okay for a time? No, Habibi, we don't understand Habibi. Okay, fifth time? No, we don't understand. Sixth time? No. Seven time? So Allah, he had to write, rewrite his book seven time in order to make his words clear. That is the worst author ever in history. Are you there, Yaqub? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Mm -hmm. You see how good your God is? Man, he is so good in writing. He needed to write the Quran seven times so people, they might understand. And who is the one giving <laughs> advice? Muhammad. <laughs> the one who do not know even how to write, how to read. Allah has taken advice from the illiterate about how his book can be good or not. Look like Muhammad, he used to work in, you know, like in those magazines who do... Uh, 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 make a study of some books, like you know, they make an article about them if they are good or not. So, Muhammad is saying, Allah, Allah, come on, what are you talking about? Once, <laughs> no way, my, my people are stupid, you have no idea, <laughs> you know, you need to write it again, okay? Send me a second one. Allah, he said, Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, Allah, he go to the office, he write it second time. I mean, have you ever heard, is that a bazaar? This is a Middle Eastern bazaar, you go to buy falafel, you say to him, The falafel, how much? He said to you, 100, you say, Come on, 50. Uh, 15 is too much. Yeah. Okay, uh, 45. I mean, this is God. This is a man. He's a prophet. Mm -hmm. How come Jesus did not receive the, the Injil seven times and his people don't understand? That's mean either the Muslims are so stupid and the Christians are so smart or the whole story is a fabrication and what kind of God he cannot write his book to make it clear from the first time? Okay. Um. <clears throat> and you know, hold on. 
if, yeah. if, if I ask you right now, are, are you, uh, don't the Muslim claim now that the Quran is so clear and most of them, they use the Quran of Hafs? Yes, we use the Quran of Hafs. Okay, so Muhammad was a liar here because if the Muslim, Why? they claim, that the Quran of Hafs is perfect and we understand it very well. So why Muhammad keep asking for more Quran and my people are not going go? Imagine a person who speaks Arabic is born in the Middle East, not a foreigner. He needs seven Quran to understand the Quran. A guy, mm -hmm. Abdul, from Pakistan, he do not know Arabic. He don't speak yeah. Arabic. He never heard of Arabic. And he tell us, brother, and sister, Quran is very clear. And you read the Quran, you understand it very well. Because Allah, he opened your chest. Like, what the heck? <laughs> but the Prophet himself, he said that nobody understands the Quran. Even the Quran says itself that there is a part of the Quran. Nobody knows what it means, save Allah. So what's the point of writing, rewriting the book seven times and still we do not understand what he's saying? <laughs> okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's a very strong point. Very strong point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so a very strong point. But are you like, are you still a strong Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. Um, hmm. Right. The the you know, the Quran says that uh, ask the Prophet to consult with the Christians and Jews um, about many things. Right? No, you know, no, not consult. No, no, not consult. To no. verify. So. No, 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 my friend. The verse says in Kuntafi Shakin, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, what Shak mean? Doubt. Exactly. There's a huge difference between consult and, and if you have a doubt, go and ask the Christian. So the one who confirmed that this is from God or not is the Christians. Okay, so l let me ask you then um, this then. So. What's your, what does Christians think of the Prophet? You know, they rejected him right away. That's why he decided to kill them. No, you know the answer. Oh. They rejected him. So, and why Why a Prophet, he have a doubt about what was revealed to him? What kind of a Prophet? If the Prophet himself, he is not sure. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Like, the prophet who bring me a religion, he himself is not sure. And then he's gone. He said to him, listen, there's a guy in YouTube. His name is Christian Prince. You call him in Skype and ask him if what he revealed to you is from God. This is here, you see, the stupidity of the author of the Quran. Why? Because if the Christian already rejecting Muhammad, why he is asking Muhammad and he is actually labeling Muhammad that he is a person who have adopted. And the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say, it doesn't say he have adopted. It doesn't say, he says, if he have, if he have. No, a friend, Allah, he knew. Allah, he don't speak for no reason. Allah is God supposed to correct. Uh -huh. So why he will say to him, if you have adopted about what we revealed, if the guy, he don't have, you know, I mean, if, if, proven to me that this God is not God, because if I am God, the word if is not in my dictionary. What if? If what? Okay, but, but look, when he went and spoke to the Christians and the Jews. They laugh at him. Time, they laugh at him. And do you have evidence for that? Sure. You know, uh, the, 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 the Quran is full of evidence, you know, thanks to, thanks to Allah, you know, who wrote the books of in time. You know? <laughs> oh yeah okay i see what you're saying mm. yeah and uh yeah. you know when when uh when a, when a muslim he says to me do you have evidence i i find myself really i i cannot stop myself from laughing uh because uh the quran says the christian are lost the jews are cursed and then the quran says if you want to confirm what revealed to you go to the christians <laughs> It's like telling somebody, if you lost your way, go to the one whose GPS is broken. I mean, aren't we the one is lost? <laughs> aren't we the one we are lost in this chapter of Al-Fatiha? And the Jews are the one who is cursed? So yeah. how in the world you say to Muhammad, go and ask the Christians who they are lost <laughs> and the Jews who they are cursed? I mean, what? Uh, go and, uh, uh, you should ask them to ask the Hindu, maybe that better. <laughs> okay. 
you know yeah yeah and uh, uh, uh you know uh, when 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 the muslims they come to us and they say the word prophet i don't know what they are talking about who is the prophet we are talking about as an example you see uh -huh. if if i if i say to you i saw a video of a person a muslim he says the the bible written by john john who peter peter who mark mark uh -huh. who okay i want to go and go by this we can give you all the reference about those people but i want to ask you the quran is given to us by muhammad muhammad who what do you mean Muhammad? Yeah. Who, who is Muhammad? Ibn Abdullah. Where do you get the name from? I, I got it, to be honest, from... Hmm. Hmm. All what the Quran says to us, there is a guy, his name is, is Muhammad. from the Quran. I got it from the... It's from exactly. The okay, shouldn't this God... Uh, you know, see, he, he will say the hypocrisy of the Muslims. They say to us, okay, who, okay, when the, when the Bible speak about Jesus, speak about his born where, who is his mother, who is the grandfather, the father of Mary, the father, the grandfather of Mary, blah, 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 all the way, you know. To, no, but, to... but you see, you're missing the point here. You see, that, that that's the point you're missing. The, the Bible, uh, the Gospels are written as testimonies. I witness account of, uh, I witness account. Of, okay, I will go with you. I will go with you. Let us let us so, let us let us sure. give you an example. You cannot answer. The Quran mentioned the Quran, mission, is, the Quran mission, sorry, someone. Sorry. His name is Israel. Who is Israel? But but sorry, just one thing. The Quran was revealed in recitations, verses by verses, hmm. and in many cases, it was revealed in, um, let's say. Uh, sorry, all, in all cases, it was revealed in situations that the Prophet was in. Okay. So, so, yeah, what was your question about that Israel? That change anything. Still, who is Muhammad? Shouldn't you tell me, you know, when you, uh, when you, uh, don't this God, he knew that this uh, book would be sent to nations around the world, and he uh -huh. needed to introduce Muhammad. So, Muhammad, he says, who, the one who wrote the Hadith, erase it. Correct? Uh -huh. Okay. So if if you Muslims you follow the advice of Muhammad, then we will not know anything about this person. You Muslims you call him Muhammad ibn Abdullah, because he said you erase it, which means erase all the history of Muhammad. You keep only the Quran. So the Quran says Muhammad, but who is Muhammad? We do not know. Who is his parents? We don't know. What we know from the Quran is that he is the messenger of God. Okay, that's what we know. exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. But who is the one who said that he is a messenger of God, Muhammad? If we take it from the Quranic, you know, from the Muslim perspective, it would be Allah said that. No, right? because no. he did not have any witnesses that Allah spoke to him. Do he? He does not know. Okay. So, you know, the, the funny thing about Islam, that's if in, in case of uh, adultery, you have to have four witnesses, correct? For adultery, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have to, excuse my language, you have to see the private part of the male going inside the private part of the female. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So how come in a, in a case of a penis and vagina, we need four witnesses? I mean, this is silly. But in the case of God, he has zero, zero witnesses. So now right. a guy, he want to make us follow him by hundreds of millions. He has zero witnesses for anything, even when he went to heaven, who, uh, she said, you know, he, he went by his soul, not by his body. But the Muslim, they claim that he went by his body. Who, who so which said, one? So who said that? Who Aisha, said that? Aisha, she said, Usriya uh, uh, he, he went there because he was next to her in the bed. He did not go by his body. So, Hold on a second. Aisha couldn't have said that because this will happen in, in Mecca, right? Aisha got married in uh, just after Hijrah. Well, my, Hadisha, my friend, right? I don't care. Maybe Aisha, she is telling what, what, what she knew previously. But Aisha, you know, well, Aisha, she was with him uh, uh, in Mecca too, no? No. Do you have the reference for this, sorry? Uh, let us see. Hold on. Let us see. But even if Aisha was not there, Aisha, maybe she is reporting what she heard from the previous wife or from the previous people. Or Muhammad, he says to her, uh, here we go, and this is a proof that Aisha actually she was next to him in the bed. Let us see what she what the hadith says. Let me show you.
Okay, this is Kitabu Sira. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me show you the reference. Kitabu Sira, a Sayyida Aisha Umm Munin. Uh, You're sharing it on your screen, right? Sorry. Yeah, it's in the screen. And now mm -hmm. I will go down and I will use Google Translation, but let us see the Arabic first. Mm -hmm. Just give it a second because it's delayed for me. Yeah, that's so. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says, here we go. It says, Ma Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walakin usriya bi ruhihi. Reference number three. What does that mean? I did not miss his body. That means she was next to him, not as you said. So who, who, who said this? Aisha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? But he went up to heaven by his body. Use Google Translation. And I can give you the link. Mm -hmm. Please do. Please do. Yeah. So here, mm -hmm. number three. Let us go to number three. Uh, number three. Uh, I did not lose his body. This is Google translation, as you know. You know, I did not lose his body, the body of Master of Allah, uh, God the prayer and peace upon him. But he was taken by his spirit. Going up, you see it? Let's uh, give a few seconds. Sorry, it's delayed. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's just trans. I can see you're going to translate now. Okay. Um, Ibn yeah, Ishaq, he mentioned that Aisha. Yeah, so I can see now. So okay, Ibn, he used to say that he have a spiritual journey, right? And this is the hadith. It says, okay. I did Aisha. not. Yeah. May God prayers and peace be upon him, said. I, sorry, can you just scroll up so I can see the full hadith? Yeah. Because otherwise it's not. Well, this is the hadith. Actually, start from here because they are quoting different hadith. Here, this is different hadith. Here is different hadith. So those are reference. You know, this is the whole the whole article. And here it says, "Biography of the Lady Aisha, the mother of the believers." And here you go down page number. I think this is page number two eighty two. You know, and you go down to number three. It says, "Yeah, okay. I can. I, I found it here on my computer as well." All right. Uh, Okay, and that's fine. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, I, I accept it. I accept that this is what it says. Okay. Okay. So there is no witnesses. It was what I, I can say. I went up to heaven by spirit, and all this story is a fiction story. It is a dream. It's not true. And actually, if we go right now to the Quran, you see the Quran written seven there, times there. in order in order to make it clear. Correct. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Where is the verse in the Quran that says that Muhammad was taken to heaven? Nowhere. It says, Usriya bi Abdi, who is the one where? It did not even say to him, he took him to heaven. <laughs> no, he said that he took him from. If you're referring to the Quran, if we go strictly by the Quran, he, uh -huh. he took him from Mecca to Al Aqsa. So, did Allah lie? <laughs> No, he just didn't mention it. The prophet. Why he did not mention it? I mean, this is very funny. Which one is more important journey to go up to the seven heaven or to go a few kilometers away to Jerusalem? <laughs> what's wrong with this religion? Seriously, what's wrong with this religion? So the God of Islam, he did not mention that Muhammad he went to heaven. Nowhere. It says that Allah, he took him to Al-Aqsa Mosque. By the way, there's no Aqsa. What Aqsa? And how we know that this is in Jerusalem? How we know that Aqsa is in Jerusalem? Aqsa is the farther point. And uh, Jerusalem is not far. It's not far. So, the Quran never says that Allah took him to heaven. And need, you need to ask yourself, why in the world such a thing is not mentioned? If it's true. Obviously, Muhammad is a fraud. He is the one who brought this verse, and Allah gave it to him to tell them what happened. But as you see, Allah just took him to the mosque. Which mosque? Nobody knows. It says Al-Aqsa. Where is that? At that time, the Muslims, they do not know what that means. Do you have reference for that? that it's in the front of you. Mean. It says Al-Aqsa. What Al-Aqsa? There's no Aqsa. At that time, the, 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 the ground was occupied by the Roman. 
There was a mosque, it's called Al-Aqsa, in the time of the Roman. That is funny. No, but but look, you see, the it's not the mosque, it's like the sacred area. Like how my friend, no, it says Al Masjid. It says Al Masjid. Al Masjid is a mosque. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, say you're right, you're right. Yeah, it's not yeah. say a holy ground or it says you know a mosque. So uh, uh so as you see, even Allah did not witness that Muhammad he went to seven heaven. Mm. Allah he have time to tell us about the conversation between Mrs. Ant and Mr. Solomon. When the aunt she saw Solomon, she told her friend, run, run, Mr. please run, because the, the Solomon, his army is coming. So Allah have time to tell us about the ant conversation with the ants, but he don't have time to tell us what happened in this heaven, in the Quran. He have time to tell us any woman she can give herself to the prophet so he can F her, but he don't have time to tell us about the journey. What happened, how he took him, where, when, Nothing. All what we see, praise be to Allah. Allah saying praise be to Allah. I never heard of a God. He's, he's so he, he's so silly, you know. Praise be to CB. Yes, but but you have to remember the context in which the Quran is revealed. But I I, I get your point on um, my friend. Is on, that a message from this? God or this is a message from a man? If it's a message from man, I can understand mm -hmm. why it's not perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as long. What is preserved is the Quran. It's not the Hadith, correct? The Quran is preserved, yes. Okay, so the preserved Quran is the Quran, not the Hadith. Then how in the world now we will know what happened? As long as the Hadith is always suspicious. What happened there? How in the world we will know what happened? Who is the one? Actually, shouldn't he say at least who is the one who took who? Who took who? What do you mean by who took him? Who took this? Who, who is this guy? You know, it doesn't say even Allah. It says a glory, but doesn't say Allah. Subhanallah, the Asra. Okay, glory to the one who took his servant. Who is the one who took his servant? And who is the servant? If the one is talking is Allah, uh -huh. why Allah says Subhana? To himself you Muslim you say how Jesus he prayed to the father correct uh -huh. yeah he is praying to the father he the son the father makes sense here Allah is saying subhana subhana is not a glory by the way subhana is a praise be you know yeah it's praise. okay You're right. so subhana is a praise be to who if Allah is talking he's talking to himself yeah. that's weird <laughs> Allah saying Subhana to himself? <laughs> Isn't it obvious that this is a guy is like is making Quran and he's talking about what happened? Like okay, but... No, but but you see, you see, you see actually one second. Hmm. Um but as God is revealing it to Muhammad through him, so Muhammad becomes the mouthpiece. So as Muhammad is saying it, it makes sense. No. no. But it does because otherwise how can God no. say through Muhammad no. saying you see, uh, I, if, um, if if the one well, if the one is revealing it, the one is revealing it, is Allah saying to him, "Say, pray like this," then it makes sense. But if Allah still is the one is talking, that will not make sense. The one who is talking is still Allah. So, uh, sir, sir, what do you what do you mean? Can you can you give me an example? How how would you how would you uh, have written it? Okay, in the Quran itself, we have many times where the Quran says, "Say," correct? Say, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so say that makes sense because he is saying to him, say a glory to Allah, that's wonderful. But when Allah, he don't say, say, he is the one is talking and he is not asking you to say, even though you are going to say it, correct? Yeah, okay, I see okay. what you're saying. So he is yeah. the person is talking, he is not asking you to speak for him, he is speaking to you, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he did not say, say, he say, praise be to who? To the one who took his servant. The Muslim between two brackets, they put Allah. Why Allah <laughs> want to say praise be to the one who took his servant? Who is was who is praising Allah? Allah. Why Allah is praising Allah if he is one God? Okay, um, I'm going to note this down as well. Um, yeah. 
So when you say to me, Yaqub, that's uh, why why you don't accept Muhammad as a prophet? All of this is a is a shish kebab. You know, I mean, why this guy he have a, a miracles and those miracles cannot be found anywhere? Isn't it the Quran said? Uh, that's Muhammad. Uh, uh, we refrain from sending miracle to him. So, but this is a miracle. He refrain or not? And if we go and check the order of the verses, we will see they don't match, because because uh, uh, just to show you the madness, uh, uh, I want to focus with me a second. Uh -huh. here, here it says. Do you see the surprise I'm showing you now? No, because uh, it's a delay, sorry. <laughs> chapter sorry. chapter 17, uh -huh. verse number 59 says what? We refrain it's... from sending miracles to Muhammad, correct? Nothing hinders us from sending our signs except that the people of hmm. old times rejected them as a lie. Hmm. Okay. But how in hmm. the world this happened? This is the same chapter says Allah, he took him to heaven. Or he took him to Al-Aqsa. This is not a different chapter. This is the same exact chapter. Chapter 17, verse number 1. So 59 verses after, Allah he says, we never give him signs. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it when a Muslim, he laughs at his book. I love it. <laughs> so the same chapter saying, we took him to heaven. No, no, I wasn't laughing at the book. You were but laughing, okay. Yaqub. Come on, you are afraid from okay. the Muslim will be upset from you. It's okay. It's no, okay. No, you're right. You're it's right. A... I was laughing. Okay. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> right. So how he say in the beginning of the chapter, glory to Allah, the one who took a servant to journey in Aqsa, and this is supposed to be a miracle, and then we scroll down in the same page. We did not even go to the front chapter. It says we refrain from giving him signs. Like what the heck? Did you refrain or you did not? I mean, this God is obviously uh, mentally ill. He forgot what he did? Okay. Um, look, what, what I'm going to do is this. Um, I, I think you made your case very strong, to, to be honest. Mm. Um, I'm going to take these with me. Uh, I still am going to push a shell to speak to you. All right. But because uh, it has to happen. Yeah, well, the sheikhs are not going to come because they knew the destiny, my friend. They will lose. <laughs> and they will say to you, nothing refrain us from debating Christian prince, except uh -huh. the former generation did not believe in our debate. What an excuse. <laughs> well, well, the Christian, they believe in the miracle of Jesus. They believe in the miracle of Moses. And this is a false excuse of a false Abdul. As simple as that. And you know, when you say to me, you have a strong argument, I say to you, no, my friend, I don't have a strong argument. You have a weak prophet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Yaqub. It was nice to, talking to you, my friend. You're a nice person. You're always welcome to, to join us. And I hope next time you will, you will be here. You will bring us some shakes so we can shake the world around. All right? <laughs> okay. Just All right. Now Quick question, sorry. Uh, what time do you come on? Uh, on I come every Friday and Sunday. This is a fixed date at 10.30 a.m. New York time. New York time, take time. Take note. 10.30 a.m. Friday and Sunday. This is fixed date. But doesn't mean I don't go during the week, you know. Sometimes even I go every day. But Friday and Sunday is a fixed time. Okay. If I find a shirk, I will give you a call. But um, I will try my very best to find one to speak to you. All okay? right, my friend. Thank you, Yaqub. Thank you for Thank coming. you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right. We have a Muslim trying to call. Let us see this Abdul. Trying to call him. Let us hope he will answer. Hello? I don't hear you, my friend. Can you speak louder? Yeah, I said good morning, good afternoon. Good morning, good afternoon. How are you doing, my friend? I'm fine, good sir. Uh, for I some reason your for some I... reason your voice is muffled. I don't know why. Oh, 
I don't know. Let me see. Okay. Let me yeah. remove it. Let me see if I can. Uh, okay. Now it's better. Now, have, now it's perfect. Account. Now it's perfect. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I have been uh, listening, uh, watching some of your videos, and uh, I, uh, I'm quite right. I'm a Muslim, huh? but uh, there are some areas that I really want you to <laughs> shed more light on uh, the Christian perspective on the existence of God. Hmm. What do you mean exactly, existence yes. of God? Yeah, actually, uh, this uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Mm. I need more clarification on that aspect. Mm. I'm a little bit, uh, though I'm calling you from Africa, Nigeria. You are welcome, my friend. I, lo I, love, really I, love, Af your... I love African people. I have really special, uh, passionate for the African. I love them. You are welcome. So, you know, when, when I say to a Muslim, your God is one, and he say, yes, he is one. Correct? Yes. Is that you who decide that God is one, or he is the one who decide that he is one? Definitely, he should be the one to decide. God is one. Exactly. So just because Allah, he says to you, he's one, you accept, correct? You don't negotiate. Yeah, we have no reason to negotiate. No, because you cannot. He's God, right? Yes. Okay. But if I ask you now, he is one what? What you will say? One. Yeah? He, one God. But when, the second you say he's one God, that means there's two gods. Is he one God? Oh. Is he one God yeah, or he's one? He's one God. Okay, but if you say mm -hmm. he is one God, that means he is part of numbers of chains of numbers. There's one. There's two. There's three. Otherwise, why you are counting? Is he a number? Are you, are we counting God or we are? But what what do we mean when we say he's one? Yeah. To to my understanding, just to show his oneness, being the alpha and omega that control the whole universe okay that's fine so if i want to say if i want to show his oneness then i'm using the word god the, the wrong word because i can say uh, that uh, we have a god his name is allah and i do not need to say his one or two because his name is allah his name is allah i did not say both name i didn't say the three names i said his name a person individual so already in the language it's already included that he is a one person right Yes. Okay. But so why I'm saying the word one, the one is word one here is not right. Unless you are trying to use the Hebrew language, which is Echad. So God in the Bible, he says that the man and the women, they, you know, the man, he leave his family and they will be attached to his wife as one Echad. And this is the same word used for God in the Bible. Your God is Echad. Echad is unification, is unity, is not one person. Now, if we check with the God of Islam, who he said to you that he is one, do Allah, do Allah, or did Allah say in the Quran that if you want to take a wife or a partner, he will take it from us? Yeah, actually, I've watched that video that you really deliberate on that topic, but mm. uh, I'm still uh, learning more on that aspect. I will definitely call you one day and uh, discuss much about that uh, area. Yeah, but you know, we're trying to explain. Don't worry, still, we're going to talk about the Bible. But look what happened in Islam. The Muslims, they say to us, Allah is one. And then we find that this God, Allah, if you want to take a partner, he will take it from us. Okay, if he is, if he is a one person, how he will take a partner from us? And then the Muslims, they try to explain it. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. The Muslim, they try to explain it. If we go into the to the interpretation, they find they say, well, if Allah, he want to take a partner, he said he will take it from us, and he meant the angels or the hur, but hur are women, are human. How yeah. Allah can partner in order to take a wife with someone is a human. You know, you cannot marry a, a cat to a cockroach, correct? They have to be from the same kind. Definitely. Okay, so yeah, they definitely have from the same exactly yeah. that means Allah is a man because He chose if you want to take a partner as a wife, that will be from the black eyed whore. But the black eyed whore is made for Muslim men to sleep with them, correct? Yeah, so for Allah to be a partner for this whore, He has to be a male like you. Definitely, that's mean Allah is just a man.
Yeah, going by this perspective, based on the uh, explanation, definitely he is a man. Okay. Not, not only this, woman. not yeah. only this, Muhammad, because he was under the influence of Christianity and Judaism, he claimed, he learned from the Jews and the Christians that the Messiah is coming back. And he and you, Muslim, you 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 uh, you believe in the false Messiah, the Dajjal, right? Al Messiah al Dajjal. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Al Messiah al Dajjal, according to Muhammad, is a person who look exactly like Allah. Is that correct? I have no idea on that aspect. Well, this is the hadith in front of me, Sunan Ibn Dawood. The Prophet of Allah, he says, I have told you so much about the Dajjal. Between two brackets, the Antichrist, the Muslims don't believe in Antichrist, they believe in the false Messiah. He can do miracles, he can even cut a human being to pieces and put him together. That I am afraid that you may not understand. The Antichrist is short, hinted, uh, worldly hair, one eyed, and eye sightless, neither protruding or nor deep seated. If you are confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. So what this hadith is saying, Muhammad is afraid that the Muslim, they will think that the false Messiah is the same as Allah. He's trying to warn them that there is a difference between the false Messiah and your Lord. What is a different? The eye. One eye of this false Messiah is damaged. So when you see somebody, By who? we don't know. He is damaged, that's it. Maybe he is this way, he's made this way. So you okay. should know, you should know that if you are confused about him, if you are what? Confused. Know that your Lord is not one-eyed. So Muhammad is saying to the Muslims, you might be confused and think that this guy is Allah. Why? Because he look exactly like Allah. They look alike. They look alike. This hadith should be, to make it more accurate actually, it should say, because remember the guy, he is coming as a false messiah, correct? Yeah. Okay, so Muhammad should tell them, well, you should know that the true Messiah looked like that, right? Correct? Correct. Because this guy, he's claiming to be the Messiah, but he's a false Messiah. So why Muhammad saying you should know? Uh-huh. So why Muhammad saying to him, you should know that your Lord is not one-eyed, unless Muhammad, he worshiped Jesus. And the Lord here is Jesus. Because the person who is coming, this false Dajjal, he is claiming to be the claiming to be Jesus. He is not claiming to be Allah. That's why his name to be Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So he, 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 this is why we, they call him Al Masih al Dajjal, the Messiah, the liar. So he is a false Messiah. So he is claiming to be the Messiah. So why Muhammad he is saying you should know that your Lord is not one eyed. Your Lord here must be Jesus. And this is mean that in a certain point Muhammad he believed that Jesus is God. Otherwise, if he is talking about Allah, not Jesus, that means Allah look like Jesus too. Because remember, the false Messiah is a man. Correct? Yes. Okay. So why Muhammad is worried that the Muslim, they might think that this false Messiah is Allah. And how we can recognize the difference between them? Just one eye. So anybody with two eyes definitely really looks like Jesus. And whoever looks like Jesus, definitely he is a God. And this is funny, by the way, because, I mean, this is the only difference between this guy, he, can, he can't can cut a human being, put him together. He can't fix his eye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Muhammad, he says to you that this guy, he can chop a person by his sword and make him two pieces. <laughs> you know, he can make him shish kebab and he can put him together. So this guy, he can is a creator, obviously, then... You know, so how he can how come he cannot fix he can go to a surgery like in Thailand they change your gender you know they install a new they, inst they, they install a new ass for you if you like to have a big ass so this guy he can go mm -hmm. to Thailand he can get a new eye and here we go we will not know that he is the Dajjal what does that mean I mean this is a stupid statement but here you notice how Islam is a very confusing cult and you don't have a God my friend he's yeah, one actually that is why I really call you I really want to have some clarification about the Jesus Christ, the his um, the miracles under his being. 
as a Lord and Savior to the Christians. I just want to have more information and more light on what it is. My friend, uh, Christ, look at the name of Christ. Do you know what Christ uh, present when we say Christ? Why, why, you see, if you go in the Quran, I don't know if you know a little Arabic or not, it says Al Messiah. Yeah, well, actually, I'm from Africa. I don't have much knowledge about uh, Arabic. My it's friend, doesn't matter. I am a black, a blonde, African American from Japan. Still, I speak Arabic. Listen carefully. You can learn language. Listen, the Quran says Al Messiah. Al in the language today means the. 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 Mm. Mm. Al in the old Aramaic and Hebrew mean God. You will notice not even one time the Messiah is mentioned as Messiah. He is Al Messiah always. Al we Al added before a name only if it is godly name or nothing like it. There's only one person, one individual. Okay. okay. So the Muslim they say Allah, right? Yeah. Okay, Al Masih. Why you don't say Al Muhammad? Because there's many Muhammad. But there's only one Messiah. And why there's only one Messiah? Why Muhammad is not the Messiah? Why Muhammad is not the one who come at the end of the time to finish everything? Why the Shaitan when he see Muhammad did not dissolve as he when he see Jesus as Muhammad said? When Shaitan he see Jesus, the Messiah. It will dissolve as, do, as 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 salt dissolve in water. What do you think about that, uh, my friend? I don't know what's your name. What's your name? Can I say your name? Yeah, of course. My name is Ab Abdul. Abdullahi. Abdul. The very common common <laughs> name you normally mock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Abdul. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not mocking, by the way. This what is your name? <laughs> you know. You must have already found I, I you know, love speaking to you, Christopher. This is my first time to talk to you, uh, and I'm very happy to hear and listen to you. Yeah. Uh, definitely, we keep on talking, and I'll keep on making my personal research, and I'll be calling you at your own time so that it shed more light on what my, you know, the way to go in these uh, religious uh, discussions. Yeah. But, my friend, uh, the, the purpose of our conversation is not the conversation. The purpose is to understand and to help you. So to I wanna, understand, yes. Yeah, so I want yes. you, to, I want you to, help, to, to, to focus with me. Why shaitan, when okay. he sees Jesus, he will dissolve as he dissolve, uh, as a soul dissolve in water? I'm trying just to find the hadith. To my understanding, because he is scared about seeing him because he's a kind of a very strong, powerful being to him. So why Muhammad... Shaitan, he come to him. Shaitan, he jump in his shoulders. Shaitan, he command him. Shaitan don't dissolve when he see him. How come Shaitan don't dissolve when he see Allah? But when he see Jesus, and this is the hadith in front of you, and this is sahih. It says here at the end of the hadith that when the Messiah come to this earth, the evil one, the Shaitan, when he see him, then he would dissolve completely he would dissolve like what like salt dissolve in water this is the power of jesus so if jesus is is just a man as the muslim they say and jesus is just a messenger well jesus he can do what nobody can do to the point he do not even need to do anything to save satan satan he see him he dissolve like salt in water what kind of power we are talking about Definitely, it should be a supernatural power. No, it must be divine power. Right? Yeah, supernatural Because remember, Satan is, Satan is very powerful too, right? Satan is very powerful. And Muhammad, he described even what this uh, uh, Antichrist would do. Like he can dig, the, he can hit the ground and make it gold, turn it into gold. He can order the, dark, the dirt and the dirt will open wide and gold and jewel will come. This is what Muhammad said about the Dajjal. The Messiah is a present is too holy to the point when Satan he see him, he dissolve like salt in water. So my friend Abdullah, how in the world you follow such a man like Muhammad, who is filthy, fornicator, child molester, thief, criminal, fabricator of Quran, 
who make verses saying any woman she can give herself to the prophet. And obviously this has nothing to do with God. How someone like you, coming from a good family, accept someone to be his prophet like Muhammad and forsaking the holy messiah who as you see Satan when he see him he dissolve in water that is the reason for me to call you so that I need more clarification on the Jesus Christ what, do, what more clarification you want Abdullah come on I mean look at this this is your prophet witnessing to Jesus uh, the Jesus. only information, Christian Prince, the only information we get as a young Muslims as we are growing that Jesus didn't die on the cross, he's the messenger of God, that's the only information we get. I will tell you a story. This has happened to me. I was sitting with two Muslims, two Egyptian Muslims, you know. One of them is an old man, older, and the other one is younger, like, you know, he's younger than the other one. The younger one, uh, he knew that I'm an Arab and I am a Christian, and that will hurt the Muslim feeling. How in the world this guy is an Arab and he is not a Muslim? So he said, you know, I have a question to you about Christianity. The older guy, he said to him, don't go there. The guy, he said, why not? Why not? You know, I said to him, it's okay, it's okay. The older man, he told him, trust me, don't go there because he spoke to me before about religion. So he knew. Uh, the younger one, he insists. So he said to me, if your God is the father and he have a son, his name is Jesus. How come the father did not save his son when he was on the cross? Do you understand the question, Abdullah? I understand very well. Okay. I understand very well. So I said, okay, that's wonderful. So you are saying to me, if Allah, if sorry, if God, the father, and he have a God, the son, and then the God, the father, he should save his son from being on the cross, correct? Yes. He said, yes, because the father, the first thing a father would do, what he would do, he would save his son. He said, okay, no problem. But that does mean, that's mean that Jesus must be the son of God. He said, why? He said, because in Islam, his father saved him. So if we follow your logic, Jesus is the son of God in Islam, but not in Christianity. <laughs> so the Muslim, they have a very awkward understanding of the crucifixion of Jesus. And they try to manipulate the story to make it fit with their propaganda and their religion. But the second they start asking questions, supposedly it's a serious question, they find that they are demolishing their cult. So my friend Abdullah, you don't have a religion. Muhammad is not a prophet. Allah is not God. The God who do not know how the baby is created cannot be God. The God who threatened Christian prince, if you don't believe in me, believe in Muhammad, I'm going to erase your face. And nothing happened. Not a single Christian, his face is lost. Not a single Christian, he lost his eyes. The one who promised them that I will make your face in the back of your head and I will erase your, your mouth, your eyebrows, your eyes, everything will go. And then the Christians, they woke up in the morning and they are until now waiting. And Allah, he promised them the same as we did to people of the book before you, the Jews, we made them monkeys. So this God, he made us a threat, but he cannot do it. Jesus, he saw the tree, just because the tree, just to show them example about, you cannot say to the Lord, I cannot do this. He cursed the tree, the tree died immediately. Allah, he cursed the Christians, and he told them, you can turn off your camera, by the way, your camera is, off by, is on by mistake, maybe. All right? Are you there, Abdullah? Yeah, your camera yeah, is yeah. on. Yeah. So. Sorry. Uh, I was trying. I was, I'm just trying to read the hadith you, uh, on your screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so if you don't believe in me, Allah will erase our faces. He will efface it and nothing happened. False, false threat, false prophet, false God. And we can show you tons of those. So why are you, my friend, Abdullah, you don't decide to leave Islam right now? Obviously, your prophet is a false prophet. The sun set in murky water. The son, uh, Allah, he uh, sends al Qurnain and he is a, a bisexual to build a dam between us and Gog and Magog. We cannot find Gog and Magog, and the, the ratio of Gog and Magog is 1,000. Uh, we lost connection with him. It's 1,000 to, to one human being. Let us call him again and see maybe we can get Abdullah out of Islam as usual. We do. Yes, Abdullah. Ah, no. I will 
but maybe he lost his connection, I'm not sure. I'm trying to call again. All right, I don't know what the problem. He cannot, uh, he did not receive my call. But I hope that Abdullah will text me again and tell me if you'd like me to call him. And uh, we hope to hear from him that he decided to leave Islam. Uh, <clears throat> let us hear. Uh, we have uh, another Muslim. <coughs> Trying to call another Muslim. And you know, the funny, the Muslim, they say, they, they, they get surprised about the number of Muslims leave Islam after talking to me. It's not me who is making you leave Islam. It's just a stupid religion. What is this? Now this is, can be even from God for a second. This guy is not answering. Let's see different Abdul. If you are Abdul, you like to talk to me, please text me and I will call you. Okay, I don't know if this person is still there. You know, the, the, the problem is, most of them, they start calling. The second they see somebody talking, they start calling. All of them, they call. If nobody is calling, nobody is talking, nobody call. Uh, Islam is a very, very stupid cult. And the idea of it is very simple to understand. There's a God, if you believe in him, he will make your penis endless. And he will give you a lot of vagina. And this God is very sexual. However, this God, he promised you banana. And he promised you that you will have a nice pillow. And you will sit in couches. And you will have a river of wine. A river of milk. Your women... They will be jailed inside their tents because this is the God of the Arab. You do not know better. And because those Arab, they like to own women, not to marry women. He knew their mentality. He knew how they like to capture the women so she cannot leave them for a different one. That's why Muslims, they build houses with high walls so the neighbors cannot see inside the house. They're females. It's an ownership. He is so worried about somebody seeing her feet because he speak of himself. He knew himself when he looked at women what he see. Islam did not teach you decency. And this is why those whores, they will be jailed inside their tents. Because Muhammad is speaking to people who believe in women ownership. A woman, she is, she is just made for a purpose, and that purpose is bad, according to Islam. And Muhammad, he wanted them to be sure that they will get what they like to get. What do you like to have? The Arab, they are Bedouin. They take a shower once a year, or maybe once every few years. Water is not exist, very rare. So what we can promise them? Grass. Green grass. If the followers of Muhammad is people who live in Netherlands, that promise will be weird. Those people, they like to have sun or if they live in Norway. Muhammad, he promised them silk because they are poor. He promised them grass, green grass. Even the clothes they will wear, it is a green. You see, the Muslim translation always is very funny and weird. You cannot take a translation seriously. All their translation is, is absolutely false. Uh, you change the translator, you change the whole book. Istabraq, imagine, Istabraq is a kind of fabric 
made in Iran. At that time, Iran was a pagan, supposedly. They believe they worship the fire, and they are not pagan Muslims yet. So why Allah wanna buy or why Allah wanna take their maid and import to heaven? So he promised the Muslims Gucci. This is a fancy silk, very well known in Iran. So he was trying to tempt them as any satanic cult do. Women, sex, gold, silver, In this penis, your orgasm will be 70 years. You are from the desert, we will give you green clothes. We are going to make you wear a bracelet, which the Arab, they don't have. You will drink pure water. The Arab, they drink their water even with their animals. All the promises is a promise of people of the desert. <clears throat> Your dishes will be made from silver and crystal. You will have servants. They are little boys. The Arab are lazy. It's not a secret. That's why they are the, the most less productive nation in this earth. So he promised them that even the grape, you don't need even to go and stand up to grab it. The grape tree is so down to you, to your hand, just grab it. And he repeat himself again, silk, green silk, pillow. Have you ever heard of a God he promised me a pillow, a couch? This is from God. So you notice here, that this God, he speak to your sexual desire and your belly. Islam, all of it is focused in the belly and down. There's no love. The women, they will love. The, there's, you see, God, he created Adam and Eve, not Adam and 1,000 Eve. So why I go back to heaven and I find a lot of women waiting for me? And some people, they think, that Muslims believe that you will get there 72 versions. That is false. 72 versions is the lowest reward. This is for the bad Muslim. For the one, he will enter heaven at the end, which means the lowest, the bad, the worst Muslim. And we will show you the reference. And Muhammad, he promised them that you will be rich even richer than many, 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 many kings. He keep repeating how many kings, they will be more rich. But you ask yourself, what we will do with the richness in heaven where everything for free? What do you mean I will be so rich? Isn't everything there for free? Wrong. In the heaven, money work. In the heaven, there is a bazaar. <clears throat> and this bazaar have nothing to sell and buy in it. Except sex magazine. It's hard to believe that this religion teach that. But as you know, we don't say things without showing reference. Muhammad he claimed in the heaven there is a there is a there is a bazaar there is a market and this bazaar does not have anything to sell or to buy except images of men and women and if the man he like an image he enter it to have sex with it and for sure the Muslim they will say to you this is daif but daif still is accepted. And the Aif is Muhammad said it, and this is why it is in the book. In the heaven, inna fil jannati lasuq. Ma fiha shira'un wa la bay'a. 
In the indeed, Muhammad said, in paradise there is a market which there is no buying nor selling except images of men and women. So whenever a man he desired the image, he enter it. Six magazines. And you notice that the one who will enter the images is men. The customers, all of them are men. The one who you would sleep with, it can be men and women. They are images of men and women. In the heaven of Islam, homosexuality is very welcome. So you go to the magazine market, you start flipping the pages, you find, you, let us say you are a guy, and you find a guy you like him. He is sexy and you know it. You jump inside the image and you have sex with it. So how in the world we can accept such a cult to be a religion? It's a madness. Let us see this guy, he is trying to contact. <clears throat> Give him a chance. Feel free to subscribe to our channel if you like what we do. And we give our books for free in many languages. That means they post for you from time to time. And don't forget to subscribe to Patreon. It costs you nothing. So you can get notification when we go live on air. Let us try him one more time. If you don't answer, we will block him. We will see. Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Go ahead. I want to debate. What do you want to debate about? Are you qualified to debate? Yeah, I can debate. Do you know how to write, how to read? <clears throat> of course, I know how to write and read. Oh, what do you mean, of course? Well, who doesn't know how to write and read? Who? Well, I do know how to write and read, yeah. So, uh, there is a qualification of knowledge to know how to write, how to read, or there is no need? I can do that, yes. I don't understand what? I can read and write, you ask me. I know, I, I know, but is reading and uh, reading and writing is a qualification for somebody to debate about something? To teach us about, about God? Yeah. So how you how you're a prophet, he is a person who cannot read and write, yet he wanna teach you about God. No, but that's that's the thing because the like Allah says in the Quran that the Prophet was uh, illiterate so that he can uh, so that the people wouldn't doubt that he wrote the book himself. Uh, so says because, in the Quran, Kabut, verse 48. Okay, but my friend, nowhere in the Quran it says that your prophet, he do not know how to write, how to read. The word... Yes, is, it does. No. Surah Kabut, chapter 29, verse 48. My friend, okay, I will show my you. Friend. The word, the word Ummi does not mean, <laughs> does not mean... Are we, are we live? Are we live on YouTube? Yeah, are we, are, we are live, yes. So I'm asking you now. Do you know how to read? You said yes. Chapter 2, verse number 78. Can you read for me what it says? From which chapter? Chapter 2, verse number 78. And I don't know what translation you'd like me to show you. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me pull it up. Hold up. Okay. Uh, verse 78. One second. It says, and among them are unlettered ones who do not know the scripture except wishful thinking, but they are only assuming. Hmm. So what is the what is the word ummi mean in Arabic? It means those who do not know the scriptures, not the one who do not know how to read and how to write. That's talking about people in general. It's not talking about the prophet. No, this is what uh, that says. It says to you, it's, it's give you definition. Who is the one who is called illiterate? Is the one who do not know the book. And your prophet, you do not know the book. Do he? He didn't know how to read and write, but he no. got a revelation. Do, do your prophet angel. knew? Do your prophet knew the book? Of course, the prophet knew the book. He got the Which revelation. Book? Which book he knew? The Quran. He got the, the he revealed okay. the Quran if, over a period. But of the Quran years. never revealed as a book to him. Revealed yes, verses, verses here, yeah. verses there. Right? Verses, yeah, verses, but it was compiled into a book later. Okay, so he didn't. He did not have a book. This is why the Quran says. Uh, uh, the, the people of the book, when we say the people of the book, we say the Christians, right? And the Jews. Yeah. Okay. The Christians and the Jews. Yeah. Okay. But you don't say the people of the book speaking about Islam and the Muslims. 
No, because that's that's the people who received the previous revelations. Okay. I'm not talking about. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a sheikh. He is very well known. He claimed to be a big sheikh. He said that Muhammad was pagan and he was not Abrahamic, and he did not come from the Abrahamic faith. Do you agree with him? Well, that, well, no, I don't agree with him. No. Well, his name is Sheikh Uthman. We play actually his video each time we go Sheikh live. Sheikh Uthman ibn Farooq. Yes. No, that's a lie. He didn't say that. Okay, I want you to hang up and I will play the video for you. And I will call you after two minutes or a, 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 a few seconds. Is that okay? So you can hear it from YouTube. But how, how am I going to hear you if I hang up? Huh? How can I hear the video if I hang up? Uh, because if you actually, the, 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 in order to uh, hear the video, uh, the sound will not come to you in Skype because I'm, I have my system. It goes through the, uh, the, like the headset. So I want you to hang up for a second. I will play the video for you. Then you will hear Ibn Farooq saying that Muhammad he was not Abrahamic and he is not from the Abrahamic faith because Quraysh were pagans. So I will call you after, uh, be sure that your your YouTube is on and the speaker well, what, is on. What's your, what's your, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, you don't know my YouTube channel? What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your official channel called because there's loads of them? Uh, well this is my, I mean the official channel. We just type Christian Prince, the one that says life. And that and that okay, and the title and the title the title it says live debate with imams from London. Just search for live debate with imams from London. Well, gonna... Live debate with imams from London. Yeah. Okay, you see it? Click in it, and uh, uh, put put your speaker on. There's no need to hang up. Then put your speaker on, and I will play Sheikh Farouk for you. So, so shall I cut you? Shall I cut you off then? No, no, just stay. Just be sure you can hear. You can hear okay, you too. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Uh, because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Uh, the people of Mecca were pagan. Did you hear it? Hello. Let me play it again. Your prophet did not know who is Gabriel is. But I mean, again, he he doesn't know who Gabriel is. Right? So Muhammad did not know who Gabriel is. He never heard of him. Right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Because he did not come from Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The people of Mecca were pagan. Let us be it again in case you did not hear it. He doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah, because he didn't come from an Abrahamic mean? faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Okay, did you hear it, my friend? I heard it. I heard it. The okay. Video. So Muhammad, he's uh, uh, your uh, uh, Farouk. He said. Okay. So huh? so Farouk, he said, and you say this is a yeah. lie. You told me. I told me a minute ago. You said this is a lie. Correct. No, but he. Oh, but I don't know if that's out of context or not because I've not seen the full video. So obviously I have to see. Our friend, but you told me the one who said that it's a lie. I told you, I mean, Farouk, he said that. You said this is a lie, which means this is can't be true. I don't know. I don't know what he meant by that, but obviously. No, he. Prophet you know what he meant. He just said he did not know it was Gabriel. He came from the ch children of Ish Ishmael, like my friend, Ishmael's lineage. No, he did not come from Ishmael. We can't yes, prove that. But let us focus yes, one by did. one. Let us focus one. Okay, we will go for Ishmael. I promise you. So, uh, did he say that he did not know who was Gabriel? What did the prophet say? No. Ibn Farouk he said that Muhammad did not know who was Gabriel. Correct. He did, he did not who Gabriel was. Well, not to start, not to start with, but he found out after. Okay, but in, so he, in, in the Muhammad, he found out after he become forty years old. So forty years, Muhammad, he never heard of Gabriel. Do we agree? Yeah, he didn't. Okay, Muhammad then, and he did not come from Abrahamic faith, so he never heard of Abraham too for forty years. Correct. Okay, you just said, yeah, remember that. So how you say to me that Muhammad is from Ishmael when well, he never heard of Abraham? Yeah, because he wasn't told that, he wasn't told that, then, but he found out later. You have too much wind, my friend. I don't hear you, what? He, did, he didn't know it then, but he found out later. But how you just say to me that he is from Abraham, but he never heard of Abraham? He never heard of Abraham, you just agreed. And you just certainly told me two minutes ago that he is from Ishmael. So imagine that you are from Ishmael, but you never heard of Ishmael and Abraham. Because that's the that's the the this is like your generation, isn't it? My friend, like can you can you stay side. can you stay in a place where the wind is not strong because your voice is really hard to understand? Yeah, but that's before he heard about um, Gabriel. 
like I mean about the Ishmael and that, but that was after, the way after. My friend, there's no need for me to know about the angel no, you, now. You keep, you keep jumping I, from one thing I, to another. Do you need I to know who is my grandfather? I mean, you are telling me that Muhammad, you claim that Muhammad is from Abraham, Allah but you do Allah not Allah know. <laughs> you do not know that he is from uh, from Abraham. Now let me let me ask you. Was Muhammad? You, you keep from one we are not. Another. We are Six not. We are trying to prove to you that Muhammad is a fraud and he is not from Abraham. You said to me, Muhammad oh, is from Abraham. Muhammad is from Abraham, right? You are the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Muhammad is from Abraham, but he never heard of Abraham. How do you explain that? Well, obviously he found out later, but it doesn't mean that he. So you are you saying know, to me that Muhammad just in, he doesn't in have certain it point he did not, not know. So what do you mean he he found out later? He did not know who is his father. Well, he knows who his own father was, but he didn't okay. know. Okay, so might, how he do not, not know? know? Okay, Muhammad now is 40 years old. He never heard that he is from Abraham yet? Well, as far as I know, he never. Oh, so, uh, so now you agree with uh, Ibn Farooq. So now both of you agree that Muhammad in the age of 40 at least, he never heard of Abraham. He do not know what Abraham is. Yeah, but, now, but what, what, has that, what has that got to do with anything? Okay, let us see. You, uh, you Muslim, you claim that Ishmael, he went to Mecca, correct? Yeah, he didn't even the Bible as well. Okay, no, the Bible. in the Bible never say that. Yes, it is. No, never yes. say that. This he, is... he, when he went into the wilderness in uh, Genesis chapter 21, verse uh, The wilderness of Har Har Haran, it's not, this is not in Saudi Arabia. And even even yeah, the, uh, even even the Bible, Bible. Bible. Listen, 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 my friend. The Bible says, uh, listen, listen, right, Abdul, potato. If you want me, if you want to continue <laughs> with me, if you want to continue with me, speak like a man. You want to speak like a kid, I will hang up on you. I'm speaking, speaking like a man. Okay, you are not, you are not a man to speak like a man. Obviously, you're, you know. You're, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. With you, know, you know, you know, no, don't joke with me. Either you are a man, the guy with the beard. You called me yesterday. You are a potato. We speak to men. If you are just a kid, you are a kid. Look what your prophet in the Quran and what the Quran says. The liar they say that Muhammad, he is from Ishmael. And we just heard them saying that Muhammad never heard of Abraham. I never heard of somebody never heard of his grandfather. But look what happened. Abraham supposed in the Quran he came to the Kaaba and even he rebuilt the Kaaba. <laughs> chapter 2 verse number 127 remember Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundation of the house who? Abraham and Ishmael so it's clear they were there they left up the foundation of the Kaaba and then the stupid Muhammad he mentioned in different verse in the Quran that before him, nobody came to Mecca. Never. Never. Potato. Liar. Chapter 48, sorry, 43, verse number 23. We sent not, we never sent a warner before you, Muhammad. To Mecca. And we never send even scriptures there. Never. If you don't like the translation, we can change it for you. This is big tile. We can go to the front donkey. This is Shakir. And we, we did not send before you any warner to the town, to Mecca. Never. Different verse. Are we done? No. There's more verses. Read with me the other ones and love. <laughs> Let's see this one actually. Chapter 34. Verse number 44. This is even more horrible. And we have given them no scriptures which they study, 
nor we send to them before thee any warner. Never. Mecca, receive any warner. So if the people of Mecca, all of them, they are children of Abraham, because of Muhammad, Muhammad is from the tribe of Quraysh. And Quraysh is Mecca. So if all the tribe is from Ishmael, and Muhammad is from Ishmael, and the verse saying, we never send them before you. Any warner. Never, never. So how this stupid cult says that Muhammad, he is from Ishmael. And actually, this was what I was going to talk about, because there's a Muslim, Muhammad, and he made a comment. Let me open his comment. Just to show you the stupidity of this cult. This is a Muhammadan, and this is his comment. Muhammad S.A.W.S. was from the clan of Bani Hashim, which traced their ancestry through Ishmael, the son of Abraham. Do you see it? <laughs> if we go, and this is the same Abdul, he's telling me where to find that. Arabian prophet, I said to him, hold on, here, I, this is my comment. Ishmael is not an Arab. His mother was an Egyptian. His father is an Aram, uh, 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 Aramic. Abraham is an Aramic. How the son is an Arab? And the Quran get Muhammad busted by saying, there's no warner came to Mecca before him. Now the Abdul, he gets smarter. So he said to me, well, Moses was also an Egyptian according to Exodus chapter 2, verse number 16, 22. Abdul, that's mean, your prophet is a liar again, because Moses was sent to the people of Israel, so how he is an Egyptian, but yet he is sent to the Hebrew. If they called him Egyptian, that's because he came from Egypt, not because he's an Egyptian. This is what they called him. He did not say, I'm an Egyptian. <laughs> then, actually, let us, let us show you more of the comment, just to show you that how those people, they are desperate, to make their prophet a prophet and to have him, to give him a decent name, like a family name. He's unknown. Nobody knows his father. Nobody knows his family. So look here. Let me show you this uh, comment here. Let me wait on the screen. Let us read together. Oh, this is a different person, actually. No, this is a different comment. Let me sure. Uh, I hope I did not delete the, the whole comment. Let me see. I, I take screenshots sometime because I know Muslims, they will delete their comment. Uh, maybe I did not have it all here. Let's see. Oh, I have it. Okay, hold on. Here we go. I found it. Because what they do, they make a comment, and they were, they hope that I will not notice it. The second they notice that I did read their comment, what they do, they go and delete the comment. Look what this guy, he said. According to the Bible, Moses and his people were Egyptian because they dwelt in Egypt for 400, 430 years. In fact, uh, uh, Moses and his people, they, uh, the total of the number of years they've been there is almost... 200 something years, not 400. 400 is the time of, let us say, going around from places to places. But the slavery time, uh, the, the time they, they live inside Egypt, it was uh, uh, about uh, 200 years. Uh, people were often labeled uh, with the name of the land which they came. Hajar is not an Egyptian name. The name of old, of old South Arabian it is referred to region around Bahrain. Just to show you how stupid those Muhammad. And what if I show you right now that you're a prophet. He says it clearly that Hajar, the mother of Ishmael, is from Egypt. Let us go. This is why I say, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't debate Muslims. We get them busted. They lie. They, they, they fabricate. They love to, even against their prophet. Uh, 
Uh, let's hope that we can find it in the English website. <clears throat> Here we go. So remember, he just said in the comment that uh, Hajar is not an Egyptian name and she is not an Egyptian. She is an Arab. This is what he said. And this is what your prophet said. I'm trying to find it in English. Here we go. Thank God we found it in English. <laughs> your prophet saying, when you go to Egypt, take care of the Coptic people. Why? Because they are relative to us. Who oh, they are relative? How? Because the mother of Ishmael, she's a Coptic. How we know that? Maybe maybe Christian Prince is lying. Maybe this is not about Ishmael. Let us go and get the fatwa. <laughs> this is your stupid fatwa. And this is your stupid Islamic website. And this is the stupid you got busted. Fatwa number 64910. Let us use Google Translation. Peace be upon him. Go down here. He says, the reason he mentioned that because the mother of Ishmael, she was a Coptic. Do you know how to read? The mother of Ibrahim, suppose his son too, and the mother of Ishmael, she is a Coptic. Let us see. And this is Sahih by Al Alabani. And Do the Muslims even know how to read? Let me switch it back to the Arabic because the English came confusing in order to read it. Sometimes if you use Google Translation right away, uh, the page doesn't come right. But let us go read here. It says, Ummu Ismaila Qubtiya. Here I'm trying to find where it says the mother of Ishmael. I don't see it in the English translation. Uh, when I use, uh, I don't see even the word Ishmael for some reason in the English translation. Yeah, I don't see the word Ishmael, it is, it's gone. But here, anyone who speaks Arabic, it says, وَقَدْ فَسَّرَ أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ الذِّمَّةِ وَالرَّحْمِ فِي شَأْنِ مصر Hajar Ummu Ismail because Hajar, the mother of Ishmael, is a Coptic. Actually, we can do this. We can open Google Translation, take the phrase by itself. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, my friend. Don't call me right now. Uh, let me, I want to open Google Translation. All right, we will copy the text as it is. We take it there. Go to Google Translation. Copy, paste. Oh, paste. All right. Do you see it? So when we take it as a sentence by itself, it appears. For some reason, when you translate the whole page, it doesn't show. So when the Muslim, they try to fabricate and they say, well, this is not true, and Hajar is not an Egyptian name, and she is not an Egyptian, 
this is against your religion against your islamic teaching and you are trying to fabricate things in the same time when the quran says that moses he said all oh, children of israel if he was an egyptian and considered as an egyptian and if ishmael is the son of an arab woman as you claim and then your prophet he said that she is an egyptian and she is a coptic specifically not only egyptian because egypt is big it might be have different ethnic at that time but there was a details about that she was a coptic specifically same time the bible make it clear that ishmael when he left with his mother hajar he went and he married from an egyptian woman and then hajar who was mistreated or illiterated by uh, sarah the wife of abraham the bible says that they've been informed to come back because Sarah will not mistreat them anymore. She repent, and she understood that she is wrong, and she was doing bad. But the Bible confirmed where Hajar and Ishmael, their trip was. Let me show you a map. And you can write, actually, you can type in Google right away. I mean, you can, there's tons of websites explained to you. And all of this is based on the Bible. In Genesis 15, 1 to 21, it's telling us at the trip of Abraham at Harbon. And where is that? The map is here. You can see all the names. This is Harbon. This is far away from Saudi Arabia. Here is Sadum and Gamura. And this is the Dead Sea. And then here it says, in Genesis 16, 1, 6, as the wife, Sari, is bearing Abraham conceived a child by Hajar, his Egyptian slave girl, let Sari treat Hajar, and like mistreat, she's uh, ill-treat Hajar, and she flees south into the desert. Let us see where. The Bible tells us exactly the details. Here it says, the angel of the Lord, met Hajar at the spring in the desert. And this is what Muhammad, he took his story from. He tried to make that spring is Zamzam. But look what it says. It says in the road to shore. Or shore. This is the way to shore. This is going the curve around the Mediterranean Sea far away from Saudi Arabia. You see what is shore? This is a map. This is ex The map is exists. You like it or not, this is history. So this is the way to shore, and this is where she was going. She did not arrive there in the way, which means if that, if the angel came to her or the news came to her, it came to her here in this area, where we do not know exactly. Which means she did not even go far. This is the Dead Sea in front of us. Let us zoom out. Let us use the red line. This is the Dead Sea. This is Jerusalem. This is the Mount. This is Harbun. The woman she left in her way to shore. And then she received the news to come back. And this can be found in Genesis. Genesis 16, you can read all the chapter or from verse number 7 to 16. And then God, he gave news to Abraham uh, about, you know, his covenant. And, uh, uh, you know, I mean the story, the rest of the story. But as you see, Ishmael nowhere went close to Arabia. And by the way, the word Arabia, when we say Arabia today, we mean Saudi Arabia. But the word Arabia means desert. So literally, Ishmael, he went to the desert. And this is what desert mean, Arabia. But this is not Saudi Arabia today. As you see, this is the map. And this was the direction. 
So when the Muslims, they try to fabricate, they get themselves busted in many ways. As you see, the Quran itself proved to us that before Muhammad, there was zero warner who they came to Mecca from God. So if Abraham, according to Muhammad, he received scriptures, what Muhammad, what, what Abraham received, the Quran confirmed that Abraham received suhuf. Suhuf is mean scriptures. What is the name of the book? Nobody knows, according to Muhammad. You go in the Quran, you will find this. It says, chapter 87, verse number 19, Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa. The scriptures of Abraham and the scriptures of Musa. And this is the last verse in chapter 87. The books of Abraham and the books of Musa. Books, not book. Books. Abraham have many books. This is what the Quran is saying. Then we go back. We find that the Quran confirmed that nobody came to Mecca Uh, never anyone came to Mecca. Let us see. And no books was given to Mecca. Never. Chapter 34, verse number 44. If Abraham and Ishmael, they are the one actually who established Mecca, and then the one who are there is the ancestor of, or they say they are the seeds, the offspring of Ishmael. How in the world the verse saying, we never sinned before you. Look carefully. The stupid Quran, he gave us a jewel. Because the Muslim, he say, can say, well, it says never sent to them a messenger. It doesn't say before you. Maybe it's talking about your time, his time. But the Quran, he gave us a gift. He decided to say before you. So before Muhammad, Mecca never received neither scriptures, neither books, neither Abraham, neither Ishmael, for they never received a warner. Never. You see it? This is how we defeat them from their own books. And this is why they hate it when we quote for them from their books. We have our brother, Muhammad Nasif, the one who became a Christian. You remember him? Just a few days ago, he sent me a message. I don't know if you want me to read it. Let me call him for a second. Let's mute the speaker. Anyway, he is not answering, so I will let it go. We have another Abdul. Let us see. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend. So you want to join us? Muhammad? Yes. What do you want to say? Go ahead. We are live on air. Uh, I will just give you the Dawah of Islam. Accept it so that you might get saved. I, I don't understand. Sorry, again, what? You are asking who? Uh, accept Islam so that you will get saved. Who? You. You text Islam? Accept Islam. Oh, you are asking me to accept Islam? Yes. Okay, what I will get if I accept Islam? We'll get salvation. Salvation or versions, sex? You will get salvation. Okay, it, it, is salvation guaranteed in Islam or it is based on, you know, right. luck? Speak a bit louder, my mic's not good. My friend, your speaker is not good. Listen, 
You said to me, uh, you will get salvation, but isn't it your prophet, he said, that Allah, before he created you, he decides what you will do, he decides what you will be, he decides you will become a believer or not, and it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, he decides already, correct? Right. Okay, so why are you asking me to accept Islam if Allah... That's mean Allah don't want me to accept Islam. So if your God is a stupid. So he sent the Muslim to ask people to accept Islam. But then Allah, before he created us, he decided us, we will not accept Islam. No, no, no. no. You are you getting know, it wrong. Okay. Uh, you are getting it wrong. Okay. Let us, uh, let us see if I'm getting it wrong or not. My friend, Muhammad, Muhammad. Let us, let us, do, you, do, you know, do you know Islam more than your prophet? I do know a lot of things. No, I, I'm prophet? asking you, do you know Islam more than your prophet? Uh, have you talked to my prophet? I'm asking you, do you know Islam more than your prophet? Uh, uh, how will you judge? What? How will you judge that I, how much Islam I know? I'm, I don't know how much you know, but I'm asking you, do you know Islam more than your prophet? Uh, do you know how, how much my prophet knew Islam? Well, isn't it Muhammad is the one, the founder of Islam, so it's going to be funny that you know more than your prophet, do you? Who said Muhammad is the founder of Islam? So who is the founder of Islam? Uh, it's since Adam. Since Adam? Adam was a Muslim, right? Yes. Okay. Adam, he committed sin. Did Adam choose to commit sin or Allah, he made him commit sin? Adam committed sin. So Allah did not force him to commit sin. Okay. Okay. All right. Just to show you that you do not know what you are talking about, can you read for me the hadith we see we see in the screen? Which one? Forty-four. This hadith in the front of you on the screen. But I don't trust any hadith. I don't trust you too, because I don't trust Muslims and I don't trust us Muhammad. You are saying to me because Muslim they lie. So you don't trust Muslims who wrote this hadith because Muslims are a bunch of liars. That's what you are saying. Why you don't trust the hadith? Uh, I don't know who wrote this. I do not know who wrote the Quran too. Do you know who wrote the Quran? Uh, I do not need the Quran. To you do not need the Quran? So you do not accept the hadith. You don't need the Quran. So what do you need? You need to accept God to accept Islam. How do you know Islam is? How do you know about Islam if there's no Quran? Uh, I don't know. Okay, so Quran, even if you know a little bit, it's okay. As you He's see, your prophet. Uh, as you see, your prophet. He made uh, Allah. He said that Allah. He made Adam commit sin, and he decided for him to commit sin forty years before he created him. And this is the case for all of us. So when we do anything, Allah is he's the one who made the decision. So right now, according to Muslims, I am saying to you what I am saying because Allah, he decided that I will say those things to you. Like, as an example, I will say, Muhammad is a stupid. This is not my choice. According to Islam, it was a destiny. He made the Christian prince says, Muhammad is a stupid. What do you think? Okay, even if Adam did, uh, Adam was made to create sin, he has been forgiven now. So what's the issue then? Adam, Adam is a prophet of God and he has been forgiven and he has okay, been you just by say God. that Adam was a prophet of God. What's the name of the book of Adam? Hmm? Hmm? What is the name of the Every book prophet, of Adam? Adam is a prophet of God. What is the name of his book? Every prophet did not have the book. Okay, he's a prophet who didn't have a book. Okay, so what, he was receiving prophecy, but nobody put it down? Did, he, did Yusuf, you, did you know Yusuf Joseph, had he had any book? What book? What book? All the prophets did not have any book. All the prophets. Well, isn't it your, isn't it your prophet, he says, Allah, he sent 124,000 messenger and all their books is gone except the Quran? Allah sent around 200,000 okay. prophets. Oh, okay, 200,000 now? This is auction. This is 200,000. I saw. I thought this is 124,000. Look like the number is increasing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So some scholars think listen, listen, listen. You, you sound, you sound, this, you, you sound like a very smart person. I have two thousand people listening. I will give you a chance to convert them to Islam. What they will get if they convert to Islam? Is it true that Allah will give us big boobs in heaven? If you desire, if you do not, He will not give you. No, it's not about desire. It. Allah, He said exactly what we will get. He said you will get big boobs. And they are in the shape, in the shape of a cube. No, no. 
in the shape of a cube. Is that correct? It is in the shape of a cube. Only if you desire. If you do not desire. Well, he did not. He did not say if you desire. Don't lie. He says. Uh, okay, so do you promise me? Can you make a promise that if I convert to Islam, I will get big books? How you can confirm that to me? Because honestly, there's many things I like in this earth. I like baklava and big books. So what do you think? I Can you can you guarantee me that I will... I, forget about the baklava for now. Can you guarantee me that those books are going to be in the shape of a cube, as the Quran says in Arabic? And those... There's no women, by the way. It says a cube. It says it just says a breast. Where's the women? So, can you guarantee yourself that the God who you worship, he will give you really big boobs, women, boobs without women, which is nice, but because women they give you a headache, man. I mean, who? Why you need? Why you need the women if you get the boobs? I mean, come on. Like what the heck? I don't want women. They give you a headache. Like they buy us this, take us there. You made me upset, you know, you were rude to me. Come on, give you boobs, just, just the boobs. The verse says, Allah will give you boobs. Are they flying boobs? How you explain, okay. I can guarantee how you explain to me, guarantee. how you explain to me this verse? Go ahead. I can guarantee you what you want, you will get. Whether you want boobs, whether you want women. But, but, how, you, but how you can guarantee me that those are exist, those are real? Maybe they are balloons, maybe they are fake. That is my headache with my God. But what, you what? just accept Islam, brother. Uh, if I accept Islam, I will get the books. Uh. You need to accept God, brother. Why okay. do you accept are you, God? Are you from India, my friend? Uh, I cannot disclose my location or identity, brother, yeah, for security. You must be the angel Jibreel sent to me by Allah. You cannot disclose your location. Okay. So, uh, okay. What about Allah? He promised me a vagina and he described how they look like. What do you think? Do you want to vagina? I want vagina. No, I don't want. I don't, no, I don't want. I don't want vagina. Whatever you will desire, if you will desire, you will get it. Okay. What if a man he desire a penis? You will get it. He desire a penis. Is a is a gay. That's okay. You will get it. Uh, you will get a penis too. You like it big or small? You talk about yourself, I will talk with but you. You are the one who says it's okay, you will get a tatsmin in Islam, in the heaven. You Muslims, you will be homosexual there too. And actually the hadith says that in the heaven there is a market, whereas there is no buying nor selling except an images, correct? So, you know, yes. you Muslims, you will get images and you go inside the magazine to have sex with the magazine. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Hannah. what's wrong? So why, why Allah will not give you those images, my friend? I mean, if Allah, what is the what is the purpose of those images? You watch them, and then you go inside the image, and you have sex with it. And those images of men and women. So, if you in heaven, and you see an image of a handsome man, do you think he will jump inside and have sex with the man? No, that image will be of yours. What? You will be in that image. I'm not sure what you are saying. The image will be... The images which you will like, you will be in the, those images, brother. I have no idea what you are saying. Okay, now you, are, you, desire, you are in the. If, if you have a desire, if you have a desire, okay. So the heaven of Allah, you can confirm to us that it's a heaven. Sexuality there, homosexuality is okay, correct? No, homosexuality is against the nature, brother. What nature? You just said to me. That if you desire a penis, you will get a penis. Desire? No, no. What you are saying? If you desire particular face market, you are saying no, that if you desire particular uh, what faces, so you will get those faces. What faces? Of what yours. are we talking about? Your God never mentioned faces. He mentioned vaginas. Faces. This is this is your prophet speaking here. Says the message of Allah said in paradise there is a market which nothing is bought or sold except images of men and women. If a man like the image, he will enter it, and i.e. will become his, which means he will have sex. What do you think? Images of men and women. If a man, he like it, he enter it. So the man, he have options of images of men and women. If he like the image, he enter it. But the image is men and women. So your prophet, okay. he claimed that there is, a, there is a magazine sex market, Playboy. Okay. You see an image of a man, you go inside and have sex with it. What do you think about that? Okay. It's okay? Okay, you want that? 
Huh? Yes, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Mm. Okay. You is want it, to be is there? Is that is what you require? Whatever you desire. Okay. See, listen, see, listen, Abdul. Whatever you desire, you will get. Brother. Whatever you desire. You okay. What if somebody desire? What if what if somebody desire? What, what if uh, what if somebody desire to rape you? Hmm? You just said whatever you desire, correct? Actually, the Quran come from that. So, what if somebody desire to rape you? Hmm? If somebody desire to rape you, rape you. Just. Huh? Hello. You said whatever Someone you desire. desire. So I'm asking you, what if somebody desire to rape you? He like to rape you. He like you. Hmm? you. You will like that? You will desire that? You're asking me, I'm not going to be there. I'm not a Muslim. You're the Muslim. There's a no, Muslim no. there. Will... Muhammad, he like boys. Will... Muhammad, he like boys. No, no, he look just... at you. He look at you. He says, okay, I'm going to rape this guy. Hmm. And uh, the Quran says, whatever you desire. Whatever you desire, right? Okay. Anything you desire. So okay. if a man he decide to decide, decide to rape your mother, it's okay. If a man decide to rape your wives, it's okay. If a man decide to rape you, Allah He promised him whatever he desire. You can't say no. Okay. Okay, my friend. Thank That's you. Okay. Thank you for this conversation. We will call it Mr. Okay, Muhammad Ooh. Afzal. I mean, you are a genius, Muhammad Afzal. That's deep. I think in five minutes we learn a lot about about Islam. It's coming again. You know, no, Muhammad. I'm sorry. That's it. You know, I had I had enough of you. You are too good for me. I'm not in your level, my friend. Uh, Lord have mercy. Hey, what the heck? This guy you keep calling. Don't don't force me to block you. I will block you. That's it. I'm done with you for today. Maybe we'll call you a different time. Let me actually, let me block you. What the heck are those people? This is religion? This is really religion? It's okay. Yeah, you wanna, do you want to do that to me? He's asking me if I want to do that to him. Look like you like the idea. There's a story. If you go to Shia, uh, Shia Pan website. <clears throat> Shia, it's a Shia website. There's a homosexual. Uh, he heard one of the soldiers of the Caliphate. The Caliphate uh, Uthman was killed. The Caliphate Uthman was killed. <clears throat> a soldier, he said, a Muslim, he said, if I know who killed Uthman, I'm going to F him. If what? If I know who killed Uthman, I'm going to F him. A homosexual, he heard, the guy saying that. So he said, I am the one who killed Uthman. The soldier, he made this person bend over and he start effing him. The homosexual, he said from underneath, if I know this is the penalty of killing Uthman, I would love to kill Uthman every day. Go to the Western website and read it. It's in English. I have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with the translation. He said, if I know that this is the penalty of killing Uthman, I would love to kill Uthman every day. This is Islam. The guy he killed the caliph, the caliphate, what they would do to him? Boom, 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 boom. The guy he loved it. He said, Are you kidding me? If I know this is the penalty of killing Uthman, I will kill every Uthman every day. <laughs> and they are asking us to believe in Allah. When Allah is nothing but a joke. Uh, where is the link? The admin he posted for you already. You are not watching. So my friend, this is a very stupid religion, obviously. Mentally ill person. His name is Muhammad. He was lucky to get, to get popular. Like, you know, like, you know, when you are stupid and you get popular, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, there is some people in YouTube or in those uh, apps like TikTok, they became so popular because the way they eat or the way they do stupid things, you know? So everybody share their, their icon, like, you know? <laughs> That's Muhammad. <laughs> the difference is Muhammad was sponsored by a gang who want to rip, a rape, and steal. 
So you cannot laugh at him. All right? Anyway, I think we had enough for today. Uh, today is a Friday. It was a good time we have together. Let us see how many Muslims they decide to leave Islam. Actually, our friend who left Islam just uh, two days ago, he sent me a message. He said, Muhammad obviously was a donkey. Isn't it beautiful that Muslims, they call you to call me names, to insult me, and then they leave Islam. <laughs> Christian Prince, you're stupid. I'm going to expose you, okay? And then an hour later, the Abduli agreed that his prophet is a donkey. <laughs> Actually, if you want to watch videos about those an hour later, it is. it was uh, Sheikh Omad, see his channel, he can post his channel for you. Go watch his videos, he, he, he is the one who, who come with this. An hour later, like the movie, you know, 50 minutes later, like the guy, Christian Prince, I am here to get you busted. You are a liar and you are a coward, okay? And you don't know nothing about Islam. And then an hour later. Yeah. So do you see, my friend, the difference between us? When, when our friend Yaqub, he asked me about slavery, we did not deny it. We did not deny it. It's there. This is what they did. This is how people live. The Muslim, they deny what is in their book in order to, they think by denying they can save their belief. A true believer, he will not be ashamed of his book. The second you feel you are ashamed, that's mean you are not a believer. You know what I mean? You understand? Shame is always coming from what? It's coming from something is not right. As an example, you feel ashamed if you go naked in the street. Why? Because it's not right. But it's okay to be naked in the shower or with your wife. So there's a place. If we change just the place, that will make it shameful. Even though it's the same act. So when the Muslims, they try to cover up, obviously they feel the shame. Otherwise, they will not deny. We show him the hadith, he don't trust the hadith. We say the Quran, he says, hey, I, don't, I don't need the Quran, so what do you, what do you need? Hmm? What those people have? Nothing. I hope the person who called me from Nigeria uh, today he will be able to contact me again and I hope soon he will leave us now do we have any question before we go for today anyone so remember when the Muhammadan they say that Muhammad is from Ishmael that's a lie that is a lie Ishmael is a son of an Egyptian woman his father is an Aramaic so the children and he moved back to Egypt him and his mother. And there's tons of verses from the Gospel, from the Old Testament, sorry, saying that. And the Quran, when by, the, by confirming there is no warner came to Mecca, well, the Muslim believe Ishmael was a prophet. Abraham was a prophet. So how they are the one who built the Kaaba? They built it to who? There's nobody there? Don't you say that his offspring? Did he warn his offspring? If Muhammad from the offspring of Ishmael, well, Ishmael, he did warn his offspring for sure. So when the stupid Quran says, no warner before you, Muhammad, came there. Muhammad, he made a poopoo as usual. Muhammad, he cannot stop making poopoo. He's a poopoo man. And not only that, Muhammad, he made it so clear. that before Muhammad, he do not know the book, he don't have even faith.
what kind of a person he was chosen for the mission. Chapter 42, verse number 52. And thus do we reveal to you an inspiration book, but this is for sure proving Muhammad again to be a liar, because the Muslim agree that Muhammad received words from a mouth of a man. It was not inspiration. Inspiration, if it is, God spoke to you in your heart and your mind. If a man, he come to me, and he's physically a man. And then he said to me, hey, Christian Prince, God said to you, this is not inspiration. The Quran using the false language, the false Arabic. And then it says here, uh, we reveal to you by inspiration from a spirit of us the Quran here translation took the word inspiration as the word is spirit off it's gone but we will go over that later and you do not know what the book was nor actually the word was it doesn't exist you do not know what the book and you do not know what is faith not was you change the translator you will see the whole thing change Muhammad you do not know what faith is so what was Muhammad before Allah made him a prophet supposedly the guy who did not know what faith is he was a hippie he was a pagan but after Islam still he's a pagan he adopted everything the pagan have the black stone, the Kaaba, as Safa, al Marwa, every pagan practice, ritual practice is part of Islam. And not only that, he claimed that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. So you do not know what the book, and nor you know what is faith. That is Muhammad. Pure pagan man. What the Quran says about those who do not know the book and those who do not know the faith, the Quran says they are najis, filthy. That is Muhammad. And najis, they are so dirty to the point you cannot wash them. Najis is no more than just filthy, dirty. It is something you cannot wash. Muhammad is a pagan and a clean person according to the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 28. I hope today we were able to share with you a lot of information so you can use it in your own. Feel free to download my videos. You save them in your drive. You can repost them again and you can cut them pieces. My videos are long. I don't make videos like others, you know, 15 minutes. See, sometimes I try to make it, but I always fail. I say, I want to make a video of 15 minutes, and the 15 minutes become an hour. So, uh, I will try maybe. It's a good idea to make short videos, so people, they can download them easy, focusing on one topic. Maybe I will set an alarm, like whatever the alarm says, I'm going to stop. This is the only way to do it. So, I want to say thank you. Was Ramadan originally is a pagan practice? Yes, Ramadan is a practice of the Sabian. Sabian are people who worship the stars. This is why here, actually, you see that Muhammad is a fraud. So he promised the Sabian to go to heaven. But the Sabian, they hate the God of the Jews. The Sabian, they have a book, it's called Kanza Rabba. In the book of Kanza Rabba, in their books, it says that Adonai is Satan. The God of the Jews, Adonai, they, they use the word Adonai. is Satan, why? because he ordered the Jews to do circumcision. And the Sabian, they hate the Jews because simply they believe that the Pharaoh was a Sabian. And when the God of the Jews, Adonai, he destroyed the Pharaoh and his army, by doing that, he destroyed the Sabian. So how in the world this man, Muhammad, 
He made all those three go to heaven as they worship one God. Do you see how it works? This person is like uh, Obama. Obama, he go to Egypt, he quote the Quran. He go to Jerusalem, he wear the Jewish hat. He go to the Christian church, he hold the Bible. He go to the atheist meeting, he make fun of the Bible. And this is Muhammad. He's a lizard. Satan, he has no skin. He changed. The same as a lizard, he changed his skin color. No dignity. No faith. No God. Everything he made there is just for him to be worshipped and to take over. And he used the word God, like Allah, as a name to torture, to kill, to steal, to rape. In the name of God, a great method to control the mind, the man, the mankind. In the name of God, and there is many in history that do that, even for Christians, many hypocrites, many thieves, many liars, many fraud. They use the name of God to make their war legitimate, to make their theft legitimate, to make their crime look like holy crime. But there is a holy crime. Hmm. Interesting. Crime is a crime. Theft is a theft. Rape is a rape. Killer is a killer. Cannot be holy. So my friend, Muhammad is a person who fabricates things. This is why Aisha, she said, Inni ara rabbuka ila hawaka ya Muhammad. I see that your Lord is hasting to make you happy, Muhammad. What was about? It was about his penis. Women offering themselves. Muhammad, he made verses. Any woman, she want to offer herself to the Prophet so he can her. Come on, all of you, come on. What does this have to do with God? And why God will make such a verse? Aisha, she was watching. She noticed that her husband is a fraud. She said, it seemed to me that your Lord has to satisfy your desire, Muhammad. Your desire. Otherwise, what does this have to do with God? A man, he is already married to many women. Why he need more? How that can serve a religion purpose? How that can be serving God? So imagine I say to you, I'm a prophet. And then I say to you, God told me that you women, they need to sleep with me. And this is coming to me as an order from God. It's not my fault, my brother. It's not my fault. Allah told me. Allah told me. Any woman, she want to give herself to the prophet. Then the stupid Muhammad, after he said that verse, he discovered that women who are not good looking or not young, they are coming to offer themselves. Because what will happen, if a woman, she sleep with Muhammad once, even if it's once, she will get a free retirement plan. So women line up in the front of the house, especially old women. So Muhammad, he found that he made a mistake because now he said any woman she can offer herself. So he need to save his ass from the trouble. He looked at those women who they are lined up in the front of his door. He said, oh man, what I did to myself, look at those. What I would do with those women? So look, he came with different verse to solve the problem. He said that Allah told me, Oh Muhammad, you can post upon the turn of whom uh, will uh, give themselves for you. Okay, post upon. You can delay, you can reject, you can accept. Here we go, found solution. The verse before it says, any woman she can offer herself. All the women who came, they are, excuse my language, they are not good looking. According to Muhammad, they are older. This is not what he's looking for. And now Muhammad trying to get rid of them. He cannot open the door. There's long line. So he made a verse says, Allah, he told me, you can delay. You can deny. You can accept. You can refuse. What a religion. 
Like, come on. I said any woman she can offer herself, I should say next time, any beautiful woman. I made a mistake, sorry. You may differ any of them, and you may take any of them. It's up to you. <laughs> this is God talking. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at my door now. I can't see my door on front door. I'm going to check out to see how many women lined up. I hope they are good looking. Otherwise, I will, uh, I will, I will immigrate. Uh, I will go to Afghanistan. You know, I just made yesterday. I made, I made a claim that I'm prophet, and I told the followers any women she want to give herself to me. Let us see what will happen today. I want to go. I want to see how many women lined up in front of my door. I hope they are not in their ninety. Christian, please. I'm a woman want to offer myself to you. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, lady, uh, yesterday I said what I said, but I don't mean you. Christian Prince, you said any woman, she want to offer herself to the Prophet, and I'm here to fulfill your desire, sir. I am your follower. Uh, no, 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 no. Listen, listen carefully. I did make a mistake. I said any women, but I did not say any old women. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> listen. Okay, I just received revelation from Allah. It says, any young women, she have nice uh, features. What, like what, like what, you know? Like what, like the hadith. The hadith says, and the Muslim, they got me busted in this video, by the way. They said the Christian prince is lying. <laughs> He's lying. It doesn't say that they have nice breasts and nice. <laughs> He's lying, brother. It doesn't say that, brother. Like, let us read together. You know? Unbelievable. Oh, Lord have mercy. You see why I cannot make a, a short video? Here we go. I suppose I'm done. Topic after topic, you know, then and you find yourself going to stay for the coming hour without even noticing. Yeah, I need to find a solution for this because it's not easy, by the way, to stay. Many of you think this is like fun for me. I hate it. Honestly, I hate it. It's a topic I hate to talk about, but because somebody have to clean the garbage and I don't see anyone can replace me for now. Uh, Muhammad, he said, Oh, this is, uh, here we go. Uh, I swear by Allah, there's one whom he had admitted in paradise. Allah will marry him to 72 wives, brother, from the Huris, two from the Huris, and 70 from his inheritance, from the people of hell. What the heck? We will inherit people from hell, and they are women? Yes, brother. What is their specification? Read carefully. All of them who will have a desirable front passages. <laughs> now to understand the front passages, you need to read the verse after it, or the word after it, because they are in connection. And he will have a male member which will never become a flaccid, i.e. soft limp. <laughs> So we have a God is a promise in us, brother. You go to heaven, Allah will give you at least, at least, at least. This is the lowest reward. 72 women, brother. Two of the whore. The rest are professional hookers. This is why it says they have desirable front passages, vagina, breast, etc. Look like Allah don't care for their ass. So he focused on the front. So what is the qualification for those girls they are very good in one thing. That's why they are in hell. <laughs> they are they are hookers. <laughs> so if you are a hooker, don't worry. Allah will take you from hell because you have extra skills. Normal women, they don't have. Allah will take you and give you to Abdul. Abdul in heaven, the door is knocking. Wait, I'm having sex. Who is this? 
Let me put my trouser in. Open the door. What the heck? Your voice is very lovely. You must be the answers of read. Exactly. Open the door. I have delivery for you. You open the door. Jibril, he dropped the box. The box is so hot. Why it's hot? Are you kidding me? Those women are so hot. You crazy stupid. Do you know what is inside the box? Very hot women. They are coming from hell. Hello? You try to touch the box to open it, your fingers will be burned because those women are so hot. Me. So, like you wear gloves, like silicone gloves, to open the box. You open the box, fire is coming out from their boobs, coming out from their vagina. I mean, they are coming from hell. And then you look, and you say, Subhanallah. And the hookers, they come from the box right away, and they will say, Honey, I'm here for you. How you like it? Abdul, he will say, um, I'm not really sure how I like it because I am a gender confused person, brother. Al Takbir. This is religion, this is heaven. What kind of God, he said to his prophet, tell them they will have women from hell. They have a special sex skills, they are hookers. And what is their qualification is not they are like decent women, repented women, women who pray to God, ask for, no. The reason they are taken from hell because they have a desirable front passages. Man. I mean, even in hell, there is, uh, <laughs> there is like a mistreatment for the one who don't look good. I mean, look at this. So I don't, I don't look good. What I will do now? You have no hope. Allah will not take a male who don't look good to the Muslims to there, you know, boom, boom. You stay in hell. That's it. What about a female? Yes. If you don't look so good and you are so good and boom, boom, no way. But if you are a hooker who have a nice, desirable front, you got your chance to get out of hell. So look, on, look, look, look here. <clears throat> hooker society. Hooker association. You are going to go to heaven guaranteed. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, imagine this guy is standing in front. Imagine we have you two today. And Muhammad is speaking to people saying this. People will die laughing. But the problem is, people like us who expose the stupidity of this garbage cult, nobody listen to. We are not the one who is popular. The media oppress us, suppress, they kill our, our videos. Do you see here? We can't even collect donation in YouTube. Do you know why? Because what we say is against YouTube policy. But you will not find one Muslim, even those who are making a threat to kill, they don't have donation and ads in their videos. Not a single one. YouTube never take their videos. YouTube never stop them from collecting donation. YouTube never stop them from having ads over their videos. We are the one who say we love the Muslims. What we do is against YouTube regulation, according to them. This is the truth. This is what they did to David Wood, remember? Any, any Christian, all the Christian, go check their videos. All the Christians who speak against Islam, if you are a Christian specifically, if you are an atheist, it's okay. If you are a Christian, we right away take any uh, they don't want you to get any uh, support, you know, they do their best. But anyway, for me, I don't really complain. For the Lord is my provider. And if the Lord is with me, let you too be against me. Uh, <laughs> time will come 
and all those things will go. Things will change, will change so fast. And uh, those who they think they are in control, soon they will be controlled. You know, always when you are evil, evil, God, he will send someone to control that evil one and treat him the same way he was treating somebody else. Uh, let us see. <clears throat> like now, Twitter is afraid that Elon Musk, 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 what's his name? He is going to own Twitter. If he own your Twitter, I'm going to resign. The other woman, she said, she is. Those are the 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 head of Twitter. If he bought it, I'm going to immigrate to Canada. Like what the heck? <laughs> What happened to the monsters of Twitter? Suddenly, you see, you see the power of the money. Suddenly, they are they are afraid. Those are the one who banned Trump, who banned everybody, who stopped me from posting. I mean, anyone. They control everything. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a communist regime. You know, in communist, nobody dare to say anything except the government, whatever the government want. And now they are terrified that Elon Musk is going to silence them because he will give a freedom of speech. If Islam does not exist, what videos would, be, would do about? Well, my friend, I don't know. I mean, for me, I believe that God, he gave every person a gift. And uh, if the gift is useful for mankind, that is a blessing. So I believe that God gave us a gift and the gift is to share knowledge. And it can be share, sharing wisdom about anything. You know, we made the other channels to speak against, uh, uh, you know, people uh, wasting their money, giving them advice how to live. Uh, a channel is called The Quality of Life. So always you can help people with many things. Give them advice in their life. Uh, you know, supporting the one who needs support. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, advice support is more important than even money support. And I don't, maybe I will not do anything. I don't know. I mean, who knows? But this is not really uh, what I do. It was not really an option for me to do or not. I came online one day and I saw people converting to Islam every day. I could not believe it. So I decide to have my own fight against this cult. And I was extremely successful, even though the challenge was so big. Because even now my English is not so good. So imagine a person who is an immigrant. He have a little English. He is going to convince. He is going to debate. Even he's going to write books. How you can do that? So the challenge was so big. But again, if the Lord is with me, who could be against me? With my little you know, English, I was able to do a lot of work. My books now is translated almost to all languages, Chinese, Russian, Malaysian, Albanian. And by the way, our book, Six in Allah, the Albanian version is already, the link is posted in Patreon. So if you are a person who speaks Albanian, you can go to Patreon. By the way, you do not need to subscribe to me. You do not need to make a donation. I give it for free. And for sure, we, you know, we, we, we would be happy to receive donation. But as you know, people, they are cheap and people don't care to support you. They come here just to laugh and, you know, ah, ha, 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 you know, but how you support yourself, who care? But it's okay. I understand. This is how the world is. The Lord is our provider. Uh, so we have the link there for our book. But imagine one day, you start with nothing. Nobody will listen to me. Nobody will listen. And then one day 9-11 happened. And then suddenly, everybody start listening. Everybody start listening. Before, the second I speak against Islam, the Muslim, the, the Christians, they will say to you, you are, this is not Christianity. You should not talk like that. This is not right. The Bible, you are spreading hate. I'm, How am I spreading hate? They are converting your kids to Islam. They are fooling your kids. Christians, they were my enemies. They were fighting me the same as they used to fight Paul. 
They called me names. They rejected me. They refused to listen to me. This is the truth. And until now, you will see a lot of potatoes. They come here, and they tell you, you should not talk like this. But they themselves, they never made a Muslim believe Islam, and they never made a Muslim accept Jesus. If you are talking about profession, what to be, I have, a, I have my degree in law, I can work as a lawyer, but I don't like to work as a lawyer because a lawyer is a liar, you know? Uh, I mean, it is an option. I have degrees, I mean, I'm not a person who don't have education. When I say my English is not uh, good, doesn't mean I am not a person who have education. Uh, <clears throat> Anyway, but this is telling you that you have always to be strong or the wind will try to take you down. Christians, they will fight you. Christians, they will make videos against you. They call themselves Christians. Maybe they are, I don't know. But because they are naive, they don't understand what you are doing. Nobody want to listen until it's too late. Uh, and you know, like, uh, uh, as an example, I use the word penis, the word vagina, and they say to me, but we not, should not speak like this. I say, why not? Muhammad, he use it. So what we will call, uh, okay, because you are Christian, now you cannot say penis. So, so what we should say, a cucumber? <laughs> Muhammad, he said vagina. So what I should say? A hole in the wall. I mean, sometimes you 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 encounter people who they are silly, and they claim that this is not the right way to speak. In order to expose a filth, well, you have to get your hand dirty. It's filth. What do you expect? And if you don't like to hear those words, well, why you come here? I mean, it is it is not right for you. Oh, you keep coming. Look like you like it. You know what I mean? So they, somehow they are hypocrite. They complain about how I talk, and then they keep coming. Why you want to hurt your ears? That my topic is dirty. I'm talking about a filthy prophet. So what do you expect? So if I want to say in this penis, what I will say in this tube. Actually, in Pal Talk, you know, because the Muslim, they were, they, they, they gang against me. So uh, Pal Talk, they banned me from Pal Talk, period, you know, because I became really a disaster for them there. So they banned me, and then they receive a lot of a threat to, to be sued. Christian, they start sending them letters saying, we will sue you. So Pal Talk sent me an email, and they asked me to come back. They apologized for the wrong decision by banning me. I came back, and then they have a meeting with me. They said, you cannot use the word sex when you speak. You cannot use the word penis. I said, why? How come every room, every chat room use it? They said, this is our requirement. So now, if I want to say Muhammad having sex, what I do? If you are a person who used to be in Paltok, remember those days. I say Muhammad having cuckoo cuckoo. Anyone remember? <laughs> Muhammad doing now cuckoo cuckoo. And they are waiting for me to say the word sex, and right away I will receive a bounce and I will be out of the software. So we created a code. So sex became cuckoo cuckoo. Uh, I forgot the, the, the rest of the code. Those who used to be there, they remember. So cuckoo cuckoo, uh, ah, 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 boo 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 boo, uh, you know, etc. All of this because we cannot use the word. All the chat rooms, they can use the F word, they can use anything, I mean anything. I mean, they have a porn there. Bad talk, they have a porn section. Can you believe it? Literally porn. I'm not joking, they have literally porn section. Adult porn. People open their cameras, playing with their private parts, literally. But the Christian prince, he cannot use the word sex. Can you believe it? I have to use cuckoo cuckoo. And then you are a new person who enter my chat room first time. And you see this guy, he's saying, the prophet, he did cuckoo cuckoo. And you say to yourself, 
What the heck is that? He was doing what? Cuckoo, cuckoo. What does that mean? You can't explain. <laughs> he went with his Aisha to the bed and they did cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> this is how they discriminate us and this is how they side with the Muhammad and always all those giants all of them they will be punished severely by God that they will come for the crime they do against the Christians for the discrimination they do against us for not, nothing wrong with it everybody have the freedom of speech except the Christians Muslim, they can say whatever they want. They can even threat to kill us. YouTube don't hear. YouTube don't tell. YouTube don't complain. This is the truth. I want to say thank you guys for being here. And let us hope that Allah will provide the Muslim with the penis will never go limp. Because it's going to be horrible that after all these promises, you go to heaven and your penis is limby. That really is not right. It is time to use it, not to lose it. And like, what? It's not working. So Allah is all merciful, and he decided to give you a penis will never go flat. This is, will be a good to have a car, have a tire will never go flat, but the penis never go flat. That is different level of a spirituality. Islam is a spiritual. And your spirit is connected to your penis. That makes sense. A lot of sense. Well, thank you very much for being here. Remember, we will be live every Friday and Sunday at 10 a.m. in the morning, 10.30. But doesn't mean we don't go in different time in, during the week, usually in the morning. So subscribe to your friends. And don't forget to download my videos because I don't keep them for long. Actually, I do not do cleaning to my channels for a while. Soon I will do. So don't hesitate to download my videos because they don't stay in my channel. You will find them always in other people's channel. And we'll right. see you soon again. I say may the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And each time we go live on air, Muslims leave Islam. Sometimes they announce it live. Sometimes they don't dare to say, but they leave. You know, the drop of the water is very weak, but it's very strong. A drop of water, if it's consistent, consistent, it keep making a change. A drop of water can open a hole in a rock. A drop of water can split the rock. A drop of water. So never think about yourself to be weak or a person who can't make a difference. If the drop of water can do that, what about you? If the Lord is with me, who could be against me? Love the Muslims, don't hate them. Hate evil. Hate the devil. Hate to do an evil act and to harm people. Thank you. God bless you. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan 
urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 